morning. Welcome to Sewing Quarter. Our director saying, yes, October's coming. It is. It is very shortly, but we are still in September. And we are, of course, in Christmas because as soon as you sew or do any kind of craft, you need a nice long lead up to Christmas. So you've got time to make all your bits and bobs. Uh, right. Anyway, apart from that, let's see what we've got coming up for you this Saturday morning. It's so it's Saturday. Oh, yes. Um, now, first up, Tash does Tilda. Um, using my name quite a lot here, aren't they? Tash does Tilda, 8 a.m. Oh, and some first ones to bring to air, new ones to bring to air by the half meter. Ooh, nice. Uh, 9 a.m., Lucy's here. She's doing an hourglass quilt for us, and it's really rather splendid. And then at 10 o'clock, you've been asking for it, so we've brought it to air with instructions, Natasha's tablet rest. It should be Tasha's tablet rest. Then you get the uh, the alliteration, but never mind. Never mind. We didn't write that. Uh, 11 a.m. is the Mr. Block. Yes. Um, so we're stepping it up a game here. So we're going intermediate uh, quilting level at 11 a.m. Something to aspire to with our very own Lucy Brennan. Now, text to win. Yes, that competition's still happening. This will finish 11.59 tomorrow night. So win an Elna 240EX. Yes, please. One entry per person. If you text more than once, you only get entered once. Um, over 18s only, please text so to 66777. Um, and check your T's and C's on the website if you want to find out all that kind of thing. Now then, good morning. Uh, yes, it is the hour of Tash Does Tilda and I've got, look at these, Floor Manager Munch, aka Liam, uh, look at these. He's, oh, doesn't he make them all look really nice? He's been ironing frantically this morning, bless him, uh, and made a cracking job. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you the bundles that we've put together, just the plain bundles, and then we'll go through each of these and see which bundles they kind of go with. How does that sound? And then you see you can mix and match because you want your Tilda to go an awfully long way. This is all out of the harvest range, inspired very much by autumnal, seasonal what's-its. Uh, you know, technical term. Um, and you've got lilacs in here, which you don't always get from Tilda, which is very, very beautiful. So we'll have a look at those in just one moment, but let's have a look at the bundles we've put together for you so that you can mix and match. So let's start here. Very, very quickly on these. I'm talking very, very quick, Tash. Quick, 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 quick. We've got an hour. It's fine. This is your ochre and teal. And of course, what we will always put in is this nice, soft, uh, either a vanilla or an off-white. We'll never put a hard white with, um, with your Tilda because it's the, more of that shabby chic feel. It's that softer colour. So this one we've put vanilla in with. So ochre, vanilla and teal. Nice. We always tell you because then if you want to buy extra ones, buy the half metre, then you can. So that's that one. Let's go pink. Woo! And again, I'm going to say that this has got vanilla in it. Ooh, is this vanilla? Magenta and pink. Yeah, it's soft, isn't it? Lovely. Uh, magenta, baby pink and ivory this time. See, never that hard white. Uh, so, yes, magenta, ivory, baby pink. 9.45, under £10 for a metre and a half of fabric. Yes, please. Ooh, I like this one. So in this Tilda range, the Harvest range, you do get that lovely ginger coming through quite a lot. So we've matched it with this one here. So this is your orange and blue. Uh, so you've got your Vienna orange, your cream this time, and then you've got your marine blue there. Lovely. A little bit more of a, um, of a masculine feel possibly here, I think. Yeah. Let's say that, shall we? Let's do that. Okay, so we've got that one. And then, pretty, pretty. The only one with a spot on. So this one here, you've got... Oh, nice. So you've got that spot on, which is going to work beautifully with some of these. So you've got your mauve and aqua. So this is your aqua spot on in there. Um, so you've got mauve mist, which is here. Um, you've got your antique white and your aqua. 
There we go, that's it. Um, so they are the four bundles, and we're going to see how prettily they go with everything. Now, first one, da -da 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 -da. brand new today. Here it is. By the half a metre, you can get this. Hey, pretty, pretty, look at that. This is a lovely mixer, really beautiful. Um, that slightly bigger than a ditzy print. So it's, it's going to be a good standout one, but it's, also, it's just really pretty, isn't it? So $7.95 per half a metre. This is called Bessie Blue. So we're going to go through these quite quickly, but I would say you could pop that there. Yeah, over here. Or over there with the teal. We'll have a look at these. Well, so I'll, I'll sort of put them... Mm. Oh, now, you see, going with the Bessie Blue, here it is with your ginger background. Nice. So you've got pink and orange. I'm loving that. Well, they call it Bessie Purple because the pinks in here are sort of purpley pinks. Let's call it that. $7.95. Again, I wasn't on the naming committee. But there we go. That's by the half meter. Let's put that over there. Looking good over there. Right. Oh, I do love the tree out of the harvest range. Look at that. So again, by the half meter. So, so pretty. Look at that. The detailing in there. Absolutely gorgeous. $7.95. This is the flower tree in blue. And utterly gorgeous. By the half meter. Right. OK, if you've never bought from us and there are, you know, those of you out there that are only just discovering us. Hello. Um, here's how we work here. You when you buy a bundle, it's all cut at sort of a half a meter or whatever we tell you on the screen. Half, each of these in the bundles has been cut to a half meter. So when you buy it, you'll get three half meters. Now, all of the tilde fabric today, you can buy by the half meter, which means if you put in a quantity of one, you get a half meter. If you put in a quantity of two, then you'll get a meter in one continuous length. OK, so you put three, a metre and a half in a continuous length. And that's how it works. So that when I was at um, the Great British Sewing Bee live last week, there was a lady in a beautiful tilde dress. And of course, you can only do that sort of thing if you get it by the half metre, if you can buy that continuous length. There's no point in trying to, you know, sew your fat quarters together or anything like that. So this is available by the half metre so that you can do those larger projects. You can back your quilts. You can do curtains or bags or whatever it is that you want to do with these or dressmaking, whatever it is, you can do it with these, uh, which I just think is absolutely gorgeous. So this one is brand new in today. So we're looking at a lilac background. So you've got your teals and your greens and then that lilac background, absolutely gorgeous, um, $7.95 per half a metre. Now, this is a pattern that we see sometimes within the tilde, but never on that lilac background again. The way that tilde works, if you are quite new to her, is that actually you can mix and match throughout the ranges. You'll often get continuity either of a pattern or colours so that you can intermingle. Uh, now, here we go. This, oh, this is just stunning. I do love this one. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Now, this is called cabbage flower. It reminds me, though, of some sort of mandala -y type style. Um, and this, again, in purple, which I have to say comes across more pinky. But it's $7.95. GJGQ30 is your code for that. Fabulous. I love it. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go through and then we'll see which goes with which bundles, I think. And then I'll also let you know if stocks are running low. Um, could we ask Munch to possibly turn off the air conditioning? It's a bit warm in here today for once. That'd be lovely. OK, so here we go. This is your cabbage flower in green. So pretty. If you have any of the autumn tree range, then we've got the same greens going through as we did in the autumn tree range. So you've, you know, you can start to mix and match and bring those through. Um, I said the other day, I'm making a big tilde quilt um, and, and mixing through all the different designs, um, just buying a, a sort of a charm pack from each of the designs and it just works. Those colors just work. Now let's have a look at the tree again. Beautiful, beautiful, here it is. So this is the flower tree again. 
but this time on that striking background. So that's, they call it purple. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of a pinky color, but okay. We'll go with purple if that's what they're saying. Um, so this is your flower tree in purple and it's $7.95 uber gorgeous but we'll mix and match these through this is limited we've had this on air before you loved it we don't have an awful lot of it left okay so please be quick if you want to get your hands on that one we know you love your tildes hey look i'm there i'm absolutely there with you uh, now oh this is a beautiful one to have in your stash sometimes you just need that calming green just to go through and again, you get that, dit that tiny, tiny ditzy dot in a lot of Tilda's designs. So this is just pulling that through. And that green again, that calming green that you get in so many of her designs, absolutely gorgeous. This is the flower bush in green, $7.95. I'm gonna add that over to the, my green department over here. Hey, if you are buying by the half meter, you get it in a pretty box, by the way. Let's pop that there. We get a lot of compliments about our boxes. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> right. Let's have a look at this one. I've got lots of gorgeous fabrics again. Oh, limited stock on this one as well. Hey, but look at it. It's just so gorgeous. So this is the autumn rose in green, but you've got those pinks in there, those teals in there. So it's going to be a beautiful one to play with. Yes, yes, yes. J-O-G-Q-86, check out your baskets if you've got that in it. Don't want you to miss out. And it is uber gorgeous, uber gorgeous. Oh, lovely. Right, okay, let's have a look at the, ah, oh, yes. Yes, 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 the flower tree in green. Isn't that pretty? Again, you know, pulling through that teal and those delicate pinky purples. And then that creates, so you can see the cream on here. This is why we've never put a stark white with Tilda. Because it's just not there. The colours are soft. Really soft. Beautiful. Right, I'm getting quite a green collection going on over here. I'm enjoying this. Righty ho. Now then. Ooh, nice. Ah, do you know what? I am a big fan of uh, pink and orange together. I like it. So we're calling this ginger in the background. And then you've got it with the pink. And that, so whenever you see an orange in Tilda fabric, she'll always call it ginger. It's always ginger. $7.95. I'm gonna pop that over here. Oh, beautiful. We're getting lovely colors going on here together. Oh, okay, stock's lower here on these. So this one here, Oh gosh, we've only got eight meters left of this. You've gone crazy for this before. So $7.95, someone could buy all eight. You just put 16 in your quantity, whoosh, it's all gone. So per half a meter, $7.95, but that is uber pretty. Let's pop that over there. Sticking with your pink. How much of this have we got left? Oh, six meters of your Bessie. Oh, getting quick. Lovely, isn't it? Uh, Bessie Ginger. No, we've got this the wrong way round. That's the wrong way. That's that one. There's no ginger in that one. So Bessie Ginger is this one. Let me show you the Bessie Ginger. So, oh, no, okay. Which one do you want to go for, Producer Paul? We'll, we'll get you the right details on those in just one moment, but bear with me. I know that you want that one, so I will get that detail up. And I bet we don't have much left of this, do we? One metre left. <gasps> if you want it, you just got to check out your basket because that is going to go. This is uh, bird tree blue. Just a stunning one, but only a metre left. Only a metre. Please check out your baskets if you want that. I don't want anyone missing out. Please don't miss out. It's beautiful. Beautiful. And then just the last one is... Oh, no, how much have we got left of this? Half a metre, so basically... Uh, this, so basically this. I've got this and that's it, half a meter. 7.95, that's your Tilda bird in green. Isn't it pretty? But you've got those teals and those pinks and a light orange going through there. Isn't it exquisite? 
I'd love that as a wallpaper. Do you think you should do it as a wallpaper? That'd be amazing. That'd make me so happy. Hmm. Right. Shall I just pop that to one side? And the other bird. Come here, birdie birdie. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. Right, let's sort out the gingers. Um, okay. This is your ginger, this is your Bessie ginger, okay? This is your code for your Bessie ginger, which is 7.95. F-O-G-Q-13. So if you wanted this earlier and you took down the wrong code, please just ring up customer services and just correct your order. Sorry about that, apologies for that. Uh, now, if you want the Bessie and the lilac, we'll get you the codes for that. Or is it just called purple? Okay, purple. Purple. Uh, Bessie Purple. There you go. That's your Bessie Purple. FTGQ09. Yeah. Now that's all the tilde. Should we have a little play now? Some have sold out already. Do you want to tell me which ones have sold out? Oh, the birds have gone. They have flown. Well done in getting those. Uh, do we know who got them? Oh, there's, do we, no, okay. Okay, they've gone. Right, okay, this is how we're going to play now, all right? Let me get you a bundle. So I've got the mauve bundle here, and I'm going to have a little play and show you which ones I think will work with that. Straight in here. This is the most, is it the most popular bundle so far? <sighs> Check out your baskets for that then. Um, okay, but this is how it's working all together. You can see why it just, it's beautiful. So you've got, this is your autumn rose here with your lilac background. And then we've got your mauve mist there. You've got, now which one did we go for with this? This is your antique white. So each of these have a slightly different off-white. That's your antique white there. And then that is your um, aqua spot on. I think it's nice to bring in that polka dot. It brings out that, um, that traditional, you know, you've got your chintz and your spot. Beautiful. I like a chintz and a stripe too. Always a winning combination. So you see, that I think really works if you're going in for that combination. So details are autumn rose and lilac there, and then the bundle, bing, there. That's what that's looking like. Now, other ones that you could mix in with this that would also look Gorgeous. Let's have a look at those. I would say that you could do your Betsy, your Betsy Purple, Bessie Purple. Is this the most popular fabric by itself? Gosh, gosh, gosh. But it's very, yeah, look, it just, it's, it's happy there, isn't it? Very lovely combination. Uh, so again, your mauve and aqua, this, so a metre and a half of fabric there for 11.45, and then this is 7.95 per half a metre. But we're looking at beautiful designer fabrics here. Tilda is just so gorgeous to work with. I didn't get it. I didn't get what all the fuss was about with Tilda to start off with. It's like, what on earth is it? And then... I worked with some and I got it. And the more that you have, the more you can work with, the more you can play with. It's a fabulous quality. It's soft cotton, um, but great quality, easy to work with, easy to play with. And of course, the more you have, the more you've got to mix and match through with. Unashamedly pretty, I think is how I would describe Tilda. Just a stunner. Everybody knows I'm a big Tilda fan. They always try and give me the two to shows because they know I love it. I love it. A new leader in the bundle department. Oh, the ochre. Well, we'll go there in just one moment. Uh, can I show you one more that's going to go with this? And then we'll go, then we'll go ochre. Then we'll go ochre. Uh, which is the... <gasps> cabbage and purple. Purple cabbage, very good for you, yes, indeed, producer Paul. Actually, very high in vitamin K, which helps your blood to clot. But uh, there we go. That's a, that's a whole nother lesson, isn't it? Look at that. I love that together. That really works for me. I think that's stunning. So this is your cabbage 
in purple. Details on your screens there. And that is your Aqua and Mauve bundle. And with all of these are on the website. So if you want to have a play, a mix and match, then underneath where you can watch us live on the website, which is sewingquarter.com, then you can have a little play and see which ones you want. But isn't that just beautiful? Happy days. I love that you've got that teal to really bring out that central piece there. Beautiful. Right, come on then, let's look at that ochre if everyone's going crazy for the ochre. I'll pop that to one side there. Whoosh, bring that down there. Come here, ochre. Dickity dickity. Oh, there's so much to play with, I love it. Right. Okie schmokey, let's go here. So this is your ochre bundle. You've got ochre, you've got vanilla, and you've got teal out of these. So ochre, vanilla, teal. So a lovely palette just together, just before you even add in any tilde. Happy days, yes, yes, yes. Loving that. But it gets a bit special once you start adding in your tilde fabrics. Oh yeah. Should we start off with the tree? There we go, this is your flower tree. Beautiful. You see, I wasn't a green fan, I'll be honest, until I started using Tilda. But you can see there's, um, if we're getting quite close here, this is the joy of Tilda. There's no, it looks soft around the edge of these, but that's because there's, there's extra detailing but this is this is the quality of your tilde and a lot of fabrics where the dye and the print isn't well done that would just be a mess but it's not you can see intricately that detail and that's why tilde is such wonderful quality absolutely gorgeous so these details down the bottom for you there 7.95 if you're after these fabrics here then you've got the details just there it's lovely isn't it I have, yeah, produce process. Does this, does this match more? I, I think there's a lot. We've got a lot of greens on the show today, so I think the greens work beautifully well. But also, if I were to bring, say, um, uh, blah, 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 this one in, there's no reason why you can't mix it through with the purple. So, yeah, this is a lovely one to have in your stash, I think. <laughs> Producer Paul says, it's tealy good, Tash. That's what you get at this hour in the morning. Uh, here we go. So you see, you can. You can mix through. So that one there is your lilac, but there's no reason why you can't mix it through. If I just move that across so that you can see, you've then got, you've got the stronger versions of the green there. So you see, you can mix it through with that. This is why this is a great bundle to have in your stash. So it's, it's just going to complement it and bring out those colours. And this is the funny thing. Hang on, can we do that thing where we... I'm going to put that over there for a moment. But say you want to do a bag. Um, in fact, they haven't come back from the show yet. We had them down at the, the sewing... So look, you could. So you can... You could go with that and then mix those through. And that's a real strong statement. And then maybe you wanted to just line it. So I'm thinking, I'm always thinking bag linings and things like that. That's pretty together, isn't it? That's always lovely to bring that through. Or if you wanted to go with that teal. So you see how those colors just change it completely? There you go. There. So I think, yeah, I think you could get away with that. Nice. So um, if you've never played with Tilda, what you need, things you need to know. Uh, the designer is, she's quite, reclusive is possibly too strong a word, but she is a little bit of an enigma. Um, Tuna Fenanga is, is the designer and she lives very, very remotely. Uh, the photography in her books is generally all done in her own home. So she is living the dream because the photography is exquisite. Um, and she just creates um, a few of these um, collections each year and 
all of them work together. So if you've gone for the green palettes, those greens will work all the way through, uh, whichever ones you've gone. If you've got some of her designs and you've gone for the pink style. So what she'll do is she'll bring out a range and she'll go, right, this is the green palette here. And so you'll have the designs with a, with a green emphasis on. But in this particular case, she's also brought out the lilacs. So you can see that you've then got the lilac range, the purple range, and they will all work together. But if you want to work them both in together, you can. So it's a matter of do you want to just stick with your greens? And look, I mean, here we go. Beautifully illustrated. You've got your teals, your greens, and your cream in there. It's going to work beautifully with this, but it's also going to work beautifully with that. And if you wanted to do a two-tone job thing going on, then you can work the two together. And you can do that. So you can mix and match. So what you'll notice is... You've got the same design here, but where you've got the you've got the teal rose in the middle, but then here, because obviously you've got the green background, you can't have green leaves, so she's put in the pink. And over here, you've got the green leaves. So you've got that green that's gonna work in there, and but it all there's always some sort of commonality, which means that you can work them through together. And that's just her genius of colour. Absolutely gorgeous. Stunning collection as ever, as ever. But you see, then you can, you can mix through. So she'll always give you big, bold prints. She'll give you geometric designs. She'll give you smaller ditzies. So if you're quilting with them, you've got the whole range to work with and the whole, work, uh, you know, you can really mix and match it through. And what we do here at Sewing Quarter is, um, Make it so that actually you've got your planes because we understand, you know, Tilda is slightly more expensive to buy because of the quality and the print and, and everything else. So it's lovely to make it go further. Mix it with those planes. And of course, planes are always going to be less expensive um, because, you know, they haven't had the cost of having to print. So we want to make it go further for you. And that's how we do it. Um, so if you wanted to mix through, say, a pink with that as well, then you can. Um, this is your pink flower bush here. So you can do that. You can mix that through. But do you know what? Actually, I would say now... There's no reason why you couldn't put it with the blue, with, with the purples and the teals. That would work, wouldn't it? Beautiful. So then what I've put here is your mauve and your teal. And this here is your pink flower bush. Beautiful. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Oh, it's so good. Um, now, let me show you about the sizings here. So if you're going for a half metre, you'll get half of this. If you're going for a full metre, that's how much you're getting. It's gorgeous, isn't it? So that could be a baby quilt, that could be the backing for your baby quilt, that could be all sorts of different things. Maybe you're just, sometimes I just like to do an entire cushion front just in plain tilde. I've got other ones that I've um, done in, um, in patchwork. But sometimes you just need that, that larger hit of colour. And that's what this one is giving you. This is giving you that extra splash of colour. It's lovely. It's a very pretty colour. And also you've got in there, so if you wanted to put through any of the, um, any of the planes in terms of your creams and things like that, then that will work beautifully. So uh, let me show you this with another of the bundles. Binkity binkity dink. Um, we've got the pink bundle here. Here we go. So if, I mean, if you're going all out pink, pinkity pink, there it is. So you can, you can mix those pinks through. Unashamedly girly, unashamedly pink and glorious. But you see what I mean about... There. That gives you a very different feel, just having those two together there. Isn't that lovely? And so you start to get something a little bit more delicate. Now, if you wanted to go, yeah, like, seriously pink, 
then you can mix that through. Maybe that's going to be a bag lining or something. It does look different. It, it's very different depending on which colours you put with it. But that's why we do these bundles for you. Or if you wanted to go hot pink, then you've got that magenta in there. There you go. Oh, producer Paul, you asked me those questions. Yes, um, I think very much so. He's just said, Tash, yes. Do you think that the Bessie purple? Yes. Um, in fact, I've got a whole load that will go with this pink. So if we want to have a look at that. So that's your Bessie purple. So most popular fabric by the half metre, but look how that goes. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely gorgeous. Really, you know, just unashamedly pretty. Just like producer Paul. I think that every morning, producer Paul, unashamedly pretty with his beard. Uh, 7.95 gets you a uh, half a metre of this. Now, if you'd like to get in touch with us this morning, then do email me. I'm on my own this hour. I've got Lucy next hour, but I'm on my own this hour. Tell me what you've made with your tilde. Uh, that's what I would like to hear from this morning. What have you been up to? What have you been making? Um, so you can do it. You can email. Oh, send us your pictures of your tilde makes. You can email that to studio at sevenquarter.com. If you'd just like a little chat, just a little hey how are you doing then you can do that on the website just underneath where you can find us live um, so go to watch there we are and then just scroll down message the studio on the right there 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 and then just have a little type send it in everything on today's show is then underneath there and there you can find it you see that yeah um pink and green winner 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 I've gone for the cabbage. Yes, producer Paul, I've gone for the cabbage because I love that with the pink. Because then it really picks out that kind of mandala in the middle. Isn't that pretty? Cabbage and green. Cabbage and green should always be seen. Again, let's start to have a play here. So... Um, this is, you know what I was saying about how you get the different colorways. This is your cabbage in green. This is your cabbage in purple. But they're both going to go here. So, and actually will also both work together. Gorgeous design. This is one of my favorites. So, uh, let's get you the details. What have we got? Cabbage green is on your screen. Cabbage in green is on your screen. I like a little bit of a rhyme first thing in the morning. Cabbage and green is on your screen. There it is. And then, should we get up the cabbage and pink? Let's, let's take that out. <laughs> Producer Paul is disputing the cabbage part of this. Oh, cameraman Mike's back in. Was that a, a message to say that your wife's gone into labor? No, still no baby, no. Uh, cabbage and purple, here we go. Working beautifully with those pinks. Gorgeous. We're all on high alert, by the way, for cameraman Mike. His wife is, is imminently, imminently pregnant. So anytime there's a message or anything, we're like, oh, 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 does he need to go? Does he need to go? Is it that time? Uh, there we go. That's your cabbage in purple. 7.95 there. Fab. Oh, I've got a message. Uh, says Lorraine. Hi, Natasha, loving these fabrics. My Tilda Charm Pack bundle arrived yesterday. Going to make cathedral window cushion. Love, Lolly. Oh, oh. There was, we had one before we went Christmas. We had that Tilda Cathedral. Mm, beautiful. Oh, I need to see that. Oh, another message. Alexandra in Essex. Hello, Tash. Um, I've just added to my stash to celebrate my birthday today whilst husband is fast asleep. Well, Alexandra, happy birthday first off. And uh, you snooze, you lose is all I can say. So, uh, happy birthday to you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. What did you go for? Which did you treat yourself to? Mm. Um, whilst I've got this pink out, producer Paul, I've got a couple more just to go through. Um, I wanted to show you the tree, the gorgeous tree, the purple tree. If we're going, if we're going pinks, you know, if we're going pinks, let's, let's, 
unashamedly go pink. Purple tree. Why not? Add it to your stash. Yeah. So then you've got, you've got all of these to play with. And then that's a real beautiful thing. This is going to be a really lovely pattern to fussy cut as well. If you are into, this is where Tilda works really beautifully. If you're into um, English paper piecing, something like that, you could piece that. Or, you know, you could just take that section and get a completely different look. It's going to be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Sarah says, find it hard to cut up, Tilda. Just sit in my Tilda cave. Help. Yeah, no, I get that. I do get that. But the thing is, is that you can either have your Tilda sat on your shelf where only you get to see it occasionally, or you can actually cut it up and use it and then get to see, see it day to day. And that's where I eventually got to, was being brave and cutting it out. Um, Alexandra says, I bought the blue bird fabric. Oh, it was you! Well done! Um, and Spectrum Solids. Can't wait to see the lovely fabrics. Oh. Do you know what? That, I'm really pleased that you managed to get that. You were the one that got that, because uh, that did just go. And, uh, and happy birthday. You deserve it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, last one to go with this. Controversial, but I'm going there. Yep because you've got that delicate pink in there. So you can pull that through. And then, you see, look, look how lovely that is. And with those, and then, I wouldn't necessarily put it with the, you know, you could, but I would say that with this bundle, those colors are beautiful with it. But there is another bundle that it's gonna go with. So, I'm gonna keep this one out, I'm gonna pop those over there. <gasps> okay, now we haven't really seen this. I've buried it over here. Here it is. Oh yes, ginger me up. Actually, this one is called um, Vienna Orange. Ooh. And we've put it with cream and marine blue. Check it out, yes. Yes, yeah. Oh, literally check it out, says producer Paul. Literally check it out. Because otherwise you're going to miss out. Check it out. Check it out. What was, oh, what was that? Supermarket sweep, wasn't it? Do you remember? Check it out. Uh, here we go. So, um, this is your, or, oh, this is your orange and blue. And then this one is your uh, flower tree in blue. So you know what you're looking for. But because we've got that ginger, da -ba -da -ba 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 -ba, check that out. Yay, loving it. Whee -hee! So this is your ginger tree, ginger flower tree. Look, work beautifully together. Nice, hey. Really nice reversible cushions. Actually, if you're doing your patchwork, then I would possibly, just saying, just saying that would all work happily together. Happy, happy, happy. Marine blue cream and Vienna orange. This one here is your ginger flower tree. Yeah, yeah. But also, Uh, autumn rose in lilac, this one. Oh, this is the most popular one. Let's have a little waft of that. Oh, okay, so producer Paul says, don't miss out. If you love this one. Oh, look at this. Could you imagine some, oh, that as a furniture covering. Cushions, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Love it. Check out your baskets. Don't miss out on this. It's a beautiful background cover, isn't, uh, color, isn't it? Um, producer Paul says it's demure. I would say lovely and shabby chic. This is, a, this is a tone deeper than my sofa, so I might have to have a little bit of this and do a little contrasting one. 7 95 
and it just it's one of those it's a happy fabric I love it now oh, just a note on your selvage if you are ever in doubt as to which colors are where check out your selvage because then you will always get all the different colors in there and you can see these really faded colors through there but they are those delicate colors are in there so you've got eight different colors in this fabric so I know that a lot of you will um, make a note of what you used and where and it also gives you the name of the fabric there so you've got autumn rose lilac so when you need to order more you know what you're looking for just a, just a note just a note just a little note to say uh, yeah, yes producer Paul Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you're right. So when we've had Tilly Rose on, who is a big Tilda fan, almost as big as me, possibly greater, what she'll often do is use the wrong side of the fabric as well. So she likes to give that, that other effect. So it gives you kind of like the negative effect. But actually, if you use those two together... Oh, 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 oh. There then actually you can, it's a quite a pretty way of doing it, isn't it? It's just another way. And then, you know, tonally, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. So that is, uh, that's your lilac. Back to my gingers. Uh, because, okay, so we've played with that. Now, oh, the Bessie, the Bessie ginger. Bessie Ginger, here it is. You can mix this through with the pink bundle or this one. Yeah, but there they are. Really lovely. And actually, if you are, say you were to be doing a quilt or something out of these, then if you mix it through with the tree, then you've got your planes. So you've got a dark mid-tone and light. And then you've got these patterns. You've got a big one, you've got a little one. And then you've got all of those to tonally go. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Uh, so that's your Bessie Ginger. That's always very popular. And then just the last one before we show some images is here. Loving this one too. Look at that. Again, picking up that background there. Nice. So this is the Bessie Blue. Bessie Blue. That's your Bessie in blue, producer Paul. Yes, yeah, so the Bessie blue was the very first one that we looked at this morning. It's number one. Yeah. There you go. Producer Paul's just testing me there. Number one on our poll, that one. But you see, there you go. Pull it through with that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, this cold is coming out. Woke up this morning thinking, oh, I feel a little bit coldy. Mm. Okay, Bessie Blue. Have we got pictures? Yay! Let's have a look at these pictures. I love seeing what you've made. Oh, go hey! So Naomi on the right. So that's the circus. Oh, I love those elephants. So she made them for her sister-in-law's birthday. You clever thing. They look absolutely gorgeous. And she was very happy with them. Well, anyone would be really happy with those. They're lovely. And then Diana made the one on the left. Now that, if I'm right, came out of uh, Fat Quarters, Fun with Fat Quarters. Jennifer Mills did that show. Uh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And a producer Paul quite likes the kitchen as well there. Oh, it goes with the tea towel. Perfect. I see what you've done there. Nice. Very nice, you clever lot. Thank you for your pictures. Gosh, you did that quickly. We only had that on the show the other day. Well done, you. Oh, a little warning, says producer Paul. The ochre bundle, let me show you. This one is the most popular. Ooh. If it's in your basket, please check, check it out. It out. We don't want anybody missing out. Um, I'm going to see, I'm going to have a little play. I'm going to see what this one looks like with the, ooh. Well, I've gone for the cabbage in purple. Just because you've got your teal and your green, isn't that a bit of a different feel? I like it. I didn't know if I would, but it's just a little bit different because you've got, look, you've got that green is the same there. Beautiful. You've got your teal to pick out there, and then you've got your nice. 
I like that. Carrie Ann says, hi Tash, Theo here, loving the blues today. Oh, for those of you that don't know Theo, we haven't heard from him much because he's, he's four and he's got to go to school. But he does think that he, uh, he controls the TV because when he messages in and he's very good with colour, very good with colour. Um, morning, Theo, how are you doing? Uh, blues, you say, you like your blues. Mmm. Uh, let's have a look then. What other blues have we got to play with to go with this? Um, let's have a look at this one then with it. Here you go, Theo. Is this what you like? Is this the one? Oh, hang on. If I turn it around the right way, that's going to help, isn't it? There you go. Hey, Theo. What are you doing? This morning, Theo, apart from watching TV, are you, are you going to go to the park later and play on the swings? What are you going to do? Oh, you know which else would go with this? And that is... Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I, do, I, I do, do love to mix and match. I love this one. So this is your autumn rose and green. I thought I liked it with that, but actually I think I prefer it with the pink background. Soz, you've got to try it. Look, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to try it out. I would hate for you to get these home and then go, actually, Natasha, I preferred it with something else. Mm, awkward. Um, here we go. I'm going to put it with the pinks. Do we prefer it with the pinks? Yes. Oh, we haven't really looked at the Mauve and Aqua bundle and yet so much goes with it. In fact, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Just do that. Mauve and Aqua. Here's your Mauve and Aqua. Let's see what goes with this. This started off being the, the, uh, the most popular bundle, didn't it? Oh, what do we think? Controversial, but I think yes. Oh, Carrie Ann says it's my birthday tomorrow. So we have a day of cake. Oh. Every day should be a day of cake. And when it's your birthday, it's okay to have it for breakfast. And visiting family. Then a day with my bestie tomorrow at Longleat Safari Park. I'm a bit excited. I love Longleat. Oh, enjoy that. Oh, fabulous. How lovely. Does Theo get to go to Longleat or are you just going, no? Look. Oh, brilliant. Oh, enjoy. Enjoy. Happy birthday. I love it when people do exciting things on their birthday. Uh, right. Uh, cabbage. Cabbage, cabbage, cabbage. Yes, yes, super yes. Cabbage in purple, yes, producer Paul, cabbage in purple. I would say yes, do that. Do it. Uh, now, if you're after tilted by the half meter, this is how to do it. Um, this is your bundle, details there. This here is your by the half meter there. So, um, you can buy this. If you want a meter, then you put two in the quantity and you will get a full length. Now, we will always tell you what colors these are. So this is mauve mist. This is, blah, 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 I want to say ivory. And then um, this one here is your aqua spot on. Because if you want, say you just wanted, oh, it's antique white. Say you just wanted to go with your, um, your, aqua spot on then you could buy like a meter of that because we've got it on the website by the half meter but if you're after the beautiful bundle together and that's how beautifully it works actually i'm going to put that cream in the middle i like that that's your antique white do you actually do you want to see that just look mm, yes hello i like that so have a little mix and see how it works for you. All gives you a different feel. Happy days. I love playing with fabric. This is what, this is basically what I spend my time doing at home, playing with fabrics. Happy days. Uh, okay. <laughs> I do also feed my son award-winning director, don't Mike, don't worry. Like, mommy, I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. Ooh. Ooh. What do you think? Okay, guys, opinions here. What do we think? Because there is teal in there, and that spot on does kind of bring that out. I like this one's the green cabbage rose. 
What do we think? I think you could do that. Or, 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 got another one of those somewhere. No? What about, what about if we did it with, oh, 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 I wouldn't have thought of that, but actually, yes. I like that. Because you've got that teal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd go with that. That works for me. It's amazing, isn't it, how it just brings out completely different colours in it. Uh, oh. Now then, the other one, of course, is your Betsy. Bessie, oh, why do I keep calling it Betsy? Bessie. Bessie in um, purple. And this is the most popular in the hour. But then, you see... It really works with the with the spot. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Beautiful. What about just throwing it in there? Yeah. Then you see this would be beautiful quilted, wouldn't it? Because then you've got your large print, you've got your mid-size, mm, sort of smaller than mid-size, a bit bigger than ditzy. You've got your little spot there. You've got your light and then you've got your plain. And I think that would be gorgeous. Gorgeous. That works for me. I'm happy with that. Lots of you adding in your baskets. Please check out your baskets. Now, let's have a look at Oh, go, go on then, Producer Paul. Let's just go through everything. Right. Would you like, do you want to go bundles first or Tilda first? Okay, Tilda first. Let's just do it then in whatever I grab first. Here we go. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start with that lilac. So this is your lilac rose. Producer Paul's favourite today. Please check out your baskets on this. It's been super, super popular. So $7.95 there with your Autumn Rose Lilac. $7.95. All of the tilde $7.95 per half metre. That is that one. Next one up is your Bessie in purple. Bessie purple. Yeah. So that's your Bessie purple. In fact, shall I go through all the Bessies? Let's have a look at Bessie blue. Oh, actually, which goes really beautifully with the, uh, with, the, with the blue flower tree. This is your Bessie Blue. Yeah, nice. And you've got that kind of tealy effect in the background, which goes beautifully with your flower tree, um, which is really rather gorgeous. Do you want to see the two together? I like. There's your Bessie Blue. There you go. They're working gorgeously together. Um, now, if we're doing that, then let's also go, let's go ginger with these then. So let's have a look at Bessie Ginger and then we'll have dealt with the Bessie Gingers. Nice. Because I think that that works really nicely with, again, that flower, so the flower tree so you can mix and match the two together. So this is your Bessie Ginger. This is your flower tree in ginger. There you go. There's details for your flower tree in ginger. There we go. So that's that. Let's put those down there. Now, okay, let's have a look at, oh yes, green cabbage isn't oh, just imagine that imagine that fussy cut for the centerpiece of a quilt gorgeous q e g q zero seven oh just beautiful um and then if you love that and you want it in a different colorway because quite frankly you have to have lots of it then check this one out this is it in your purple yeah Love, 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 love it. Um, and then maybe, that was very popular, that one. But then this is also very popular, which is, again, this is your, blah, 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 blah. this is your rose. 
autumn rose in green. But then why not mix that through with that? Now, this one here is your flower bush in green, but it's a slightly different shade, not uh, just because it's got the spot in there going through there. Let me put that to one side there and let's have it. We haven't really focused on this one, have we? There you go. That, okay. Do you want to see the pink version of that? So this is your pink one, or are they going to call it purple? Don't know. Here it is. Gosh, we're running out of time. Uh, so that is your flower bush. Okay, now uh, I've got two more to go through in your tilde. Look, and this is your green flower bush. Flower tree, sorry, not flower bush. Flower tree. Sorry, producer Paul, that's the one you're looking for. Yay! And then last one is your purple flower tree. And that, gosh, what a lot of tilde. What a lot of glorious tilde. Makes me very, very happy. As does seeing Lucy Brennan's smiley face waiting to come on. Yay! 7 95 for the flower tree. Oh, so uh, <clears throat> uh, most popular bundle is the Opa. Opa, Oka, check it out. Here it is. Going beautifully with all of these. Right, I'm running out of time, but don't worry because Lucy Brennan and I will be back in just a few minutes. Grab yourself a cup of tea and I'll see you in just a second. Follow us on Pinterest. Search for our sewing quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. So I'm going to be showing you how to do a hem stitch. Now a hem stitch is just a row of small slanting stitches that are used to secure your hem. So in this case I'm pretending that this is going to be the bottom of a trouser leg. I'm first going to take my needle through the single hem. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail before I place that back down. So then I'm going to do a double stitch. Now this is just where you sew over the same area twice so you're creating a, a knot. That's one, two. So that's securing my thread now. And now we can begin doing our hem stitch. So you're gonna need to bring your needle in at a diagonal. So you wanna pick up a few stitches from what would be the trouser leg before then going into your hem. So you can make this stitch a little bit bigger and then repeating that process again at a diagonal. I'm going to be picking up a few stitches of the trouser leg and then we can pick up more of the single hem. So I'm making these stitches super big so you can see what I'm doing but when you do this at home you'd want to make these a little bit closer together. There's my row of hem stitching, and if I just turn this over, you can see the very small stitches on the other side. So if you're doing this in a normal thread and not a thick thread, you won't be able to see those at all. This Monday, Joe Carter will be bringing bags of beautiful gift ideas to the Sewing Quarter studio. The versatile 10 purse clasp collection can be made into any number of gorgeous accessories. Among Joe's creation will be glasses cases, purses and of course attractive evening bags too so if you want to fashion some festive stocking fillers or treat yourself to a new accessory join joe as she shares her top tips on how to transform these clasps into stylish creations so join us on monday the 2nd of october at 9 a.m only on sewing quarter freeview channel 78 
Welcome back. I'm Natasha McCarty. I'm joined this hour by our very excellent Lucy Brennan, who is frantically cutting things over there. Uh, but we were kind of working away. No rest for the wicked. You must have been bad, Lucy Brennan. Uh, <laughs> don't giggle. Get cutting. <laughs> Now, uh, what Lucy is frantically working on is a little quilt out of here. This is a lovely book by the very talented Carolyn Forster. We were lucky enough to have her on one of our shows, actually. She brought all sorts of, of quilty goodness with her. And this is the one that Lucy's been working on. Hurrah! So, limited on this, but this is, ah, oh, this is also one of my favourite books because it features... Da, 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 Ollie the Octopus! I love him. I haven't made him yet, but I'm so going to. Really love him. Mm, yes! Uh, but this is the quilt that we're making today, which is the hourglass quilt. And it, this is just full of oodles and oodles of fun gifts. If you're thinking about lots of different gifts and things, this is from your jelly roll scraps. But of course, we all have various scraps left over and we know that we can make jelly rolls out of our fabrics anyway. Uh, so that's the book. It's 12 95 It's really rather gorgeous. Get your hands on that. Now, I'm going to bundle you up. That, no, that sounds like I'm sort of, I don't know, kidnapping you or something. With fabric. Well, it's softer. Uh, two and a half metres of fabric. It's all going wrong this morning. Uh, here we go. This is... Ah, we all love this fabric, Producer Paul. Um, this is your botanical range here. It's your exotic flower. It does look a little Anna Maria Horner, doesn't it? But it's not. Uh, it's, it's more affordable than that. 22.45 gives you half a metre of that, then a half a metre of your linear... Beautiful. Is that an azalea producible by any chance? I want it to be. Doesn't always mean that it will be. In what? It's called what? Berry. Oh, yeah, I get the azalea and the berry mixed. It's very nice, yes. Uh, and then here, look at that. Deep orchid, yes. And, if, and then you get your metre of optical white, which, if I just pop that next to there, Woohoo! You can see. You see, last hour we talked about tilde, didn't we? And how you would never put an optical white with your tilde. But here, look at that white. Yes, that fresh pop. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, right. There we go. They are your fabrics. You get a metre of that one. And thread. Don't forget your thread. Never forget your thread. We like to give you thread too. Oh, now the next one. Oh, oh I don't... I, mm. I'm struggling to have a favourite this hour because they're both absolutely super gorgeous. Now, um, but I think, just because I haven't seen this one before, I think that the confetti from Dashwood Studios, hello. Here it is. Producer Paul hasn't seen it either. But this is your confetti from Dashwood Studios looking beautiful with, I have to say, look at the grey linear. Nice. Now, this is called Ebony. You'd think we might have put it with ivory, but no. Optical white, a metre of optical white, half a metre of that. Oh, uh, look, the vintage blue looking gorgeous. Actually, don't those two just together look really lovely? And then you mix that through as well, and it's happy days. Half a metre, half a metre, half a metre, metre. And thread. Ba -ba. Now, the beauty of these is that beautiful light colour. Um, oh, actually, let me give you those uh, fabrics by the half metre. So if you're just after the confetti, super gorgeous by itself, then you can get that by the half metre. So you can get... Diddly diddly dee, by the half metre, that's what it would look like. Oh, isn't that nice when you pull it out? Beautiful. £6.50 per half metre there. Gorgeous. Hey, actually... You know what bundle would go with that, don't you, Producer Paul? The ochre from the earlier hour. That would work. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the other one by the half a metre. Oh, gosh, only two and a half metres left of this by the half metre. So if you want it, please buy it now. Oh. This has been one of my absolute favourites since... Um, 
Oh, it was lovely Paul, wasn't it? Paul from the sewing bee came on and made trousers out of the blue version. Love it. Love it. Um, right. Now, what you'll notice with these, when you're using something like the optical white um, and this as well, you don't want to use uh, a wadding that's going to dull it in any way. And some of the natural ones, um, if they're sort of creamy colour, they will dull it. But what we've got for you instead is the warm and white. And this is absolutely perfect. Whenever you're working with lighter fabrics or pastels, it keeps that true colour and really enhances it. So this is your warm and white here. It's 8 95 and this is your baby size. Do you want the dimensions of that? It's uh, 114 centimetres by 150 centimetres. Brennan, Lucy Brennan. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm very well. Thank Yay. You. Good to have you on the show. Now, we gave you the book. You did? Or did we just photocopy a page for you? No, no, I got the book this time. <laughs> hey, get you. You must be trusted. An entire book. Um, but we did give you the book. Yes. And did you get to choose? Um, yeah, well, we went through and... Um, I love this one. I love that it's in the social climber as well in that one. I think it's really nice. Um, but yeah, it was a, it's a nice um, mini size quilt, fun to make, easy. What do we use a mini size quilt for? Um, decoratively, so you can hang them up on your wall. I know a lot of sewers like to have them in their sewing area um, on display. Um, you can use it as like a table mat. Um, just it's just a decorative I love item. the idea of a table mat for these yeah and it's a lovely way of um you know just trying different designs and and different techniques as well, well that's not the doing thing, a whole isn't it? yeah sometimes quilt. you don't want to maybe this is just to as a technique yeah um and to exercise. Pra practice quilting as well mm. they're great they're perfect for practicing quilting I think um for me this is the perfect cat size quilt cat size quilt yes, yes. I like to think of these more yes. as a cat quilt yeah. Um, and often, they, you know, I'll, I'll put them on top of their beds because they're easy to wash. Yeah. And yeah. But then also they'll go over the side of your armchair yeah. where the cats would sometimes sit. Nice. Now, your cat easy got up. involved. Yes, my cat did get and involved. And where is your one? Oh, I think it's over there. Oh, <laughs> hang on. Oh, there it is. There Throw it, it is. Now, um, isn't that gorgeous? Now, that's using the Dashwood one. Well, do you want to do you want to show us where your cat got involved? Because actually, you yes. wouldn't notice. My What's lovely his name? cat, uh, Teddy. It's my new cat. We got from the cat rescue. Oh, when did you get Teddy? Yes. Um, it's a, it, she's a girl, although she has she? a book, so she's slightly gender confused. But okay. that's fine. That's that's um, very she's, popular. She's though. lovely, and she's getting really settled in, which is nice. Oh. Um, but so we've only had her about three weeks or so, um, and she's just into it. At first, she hid for weeks she just you know for a couple of weeks she's just hiding yeah and that's fine and now she's really adventurous and so she wants to be with me and she's help. a lovely quilty companion but she did jump up on the table as i was quilting this gave me the fright of my life and i just went <laughs> 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 so there's a point at which it just jumps there's no straight line it just jumps and goes down so that one's it's nice and straight yeah. and this one just boop just went like that, but I just couldn't face unpicking it, and I thought, oh, it's just character. Do you know what? It? Life happens. It does, and I will forever remember. That's yes. why Teddy jumped on the table. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> as she was settling in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, any cat-related quilting stories we're always happy to hear. Oh, yes, we love things Always. Like that. Now, yeah. um, s producer Paul says, did you pause? Oh, dear me. I should have paused, then it wouldn't have... Wouldn't have skipped, but never mind. <laughs> oh well. Oh, he says you're letting the cat out of the bag now. Oh no, I'm sorry. All the cat puns this is producer Paul. All coming out. Yeah, That's yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny you were talking about the like the cream and the white because the background um, of this print is slightly cream mm. Mm. Um but I still think it works with the white because it's you know it's nice modern. It um, almost print so yeah. it brings it having it against the white just brings that out it would disappear more into the quilt if you went with cream so you, you know you can get different looks depending on the background color you use obviously um but i do think that works nicely with the, with the white. it's fine because the cat got the cream anyway oh gosh it's going to be all all our sorry <laughs> who gave him coffee <laughs> who gave him coffee come on 
So um, these are nice little blocks, and this is a um, it's a really good way of practicing, um, you know, matching points and getting your seam allowance right and working with smaller pieces. Yes. Because quite often in quilting we're using, you know, big big pieces, making bigger blocks, and these are very small. Well, um, also it's one that blocks. I look at and I think. I have to stop and think, how is that put together? Yeah, and it's and part, beautiful. Part of that is because it's on point, which is a beautiful, it's possibly my favourite way of laying quilts. Really? Out. Yeah, I really, really like it. I think it just gives it something a bit different and setting it on point and not having everything be square, just visually, I think, is, is interesting. Gives it a different look. Yeah, it gives it a different look. So, and the way she's written the pattern, actually, um, it's a really good. She's just got a really good method of, of putting it together. Now, let's talk pattern, because yes. in the book you get a template. So if you don't have any whizzy whizzy anything else, then you can, you can absolutely cut out the pattern, use that as your template, and off you go. But you're a busy lady, Lucy Brennan, Indeed. and uh, have creative grids, will use creative yes, grids. Yes, will always use creative grids. Um, and I've used this before. We used it earlier in the week, didn't we? Um, Very limited on this, so if you do want this, grab it now. I'm yeah. literally now. And I did say it, it's useful in lots of blocks, and it's, that's Here it is really again. true. Here yes. it is again. I'm using it again. So this is your flying geese slash goose, if you're just using one. Yeah. Um, but the details there, literally, we're down to the last few. So 22.95, only because you keep using it. I know, sorry. That's and it's right. uh, uh, half square triangles and quarter square triangles as well okay. from this one ruler. Excellent. So it is really useful. But all of the templates are in the book. So don't think you can't use the book if you don't have the no. ruler. No. You can. Yes. You absolutely can. Yes. It's just it's just one of those things, isn't it? Sometimes it makes life easier. It does make it. It, it makes it quicker. It just makes it yeah. makes it quicker. Now, I do love this book. I love this book. Yeah. Um, it is a uh, produced process. Didn't we have this on the other day? No, we had another of Carolyn's yeah, books on the other did. day. Um, on Tuesday, in fact, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, and that's where that one had larger quilts in. So these are smaller projects for you. Lovely. They see, there you go. There's your wall block. 30 different projects in here. Um, but there's, yeah, you see, you can just pop it over the back of your sofa. It's just getting that little yeah. hit of colour, isn't it? And having, and having variety, not having to make whole quilts of... The same thing, you know, being able to do these small, okay. smaller quilts. Ever so pretty. And they make lovely gifts as well, you know, housewarming present. That's yes. really nice just to add a little brightness to yes. somebody's home. Oh, with lovely. A, with a quilt. You could even just wrap things in it, yes, you know, a new. Could. This would be beautiful for a new baby and wrap a teddy or something in it. Yeah. Uh, lots of different inspirations in there. And I, and I, I love um, Carolyn's approach. I really, really like her approach. You know, it's worth reading the introductions of yeah. books just to see how people, um, wow. you know, give you different ideas and inspiration. And her methodology is incredibly clear and um, Look at that. precise. So it, they are a joy to make. That's beautiful, It isn't is it? beautiful. Now, I mean, I Dolly. like the fact that she's um, divided it into sections. And this is the gifting section. So if you, ah, we all yes, looked at that this morning when really it was a bit chilly nice. and went, yes, yes. Yeah, it's hard to find really nice hot water bottle covers. And I think it's lovely to be able to make you, I have one that I made. Do you? Yeah, and it's, I, I love using it even more because I made myself the cover. Do you just love that? <laughs> aye, aye, there he is, Bobby the Octopus. I do love him and, uh, and he's not very difficult to make as well. And, you know, I'm so thinking, cute. new baby, yeah, lovely. give him an ollie. Because, actually, you could always make it quite sensory. Yes. Oh, that's pretty, too. Look at that. See? And I th see, I think little things like that as well, you know, hanging up around your house. It's just pretty. It's just or, pretty. you know, even in your wardrobe or in your guest wardrobe. So when they, there. yeah, when they come yeah. to stay. But just gorgeous. Oh, I like that too. Yeah, I love that as well. That's all, really yeah. Pretty. I like how she's done it with the black thread. It's yes. not something that you'd no. you'd think of doing, but, yes. but really, really works. I might actually change it and do um, different colours around it. Mm. Mm. Uh, now, the book has gone super popular. We don't have a lot left now of it. So check out your baskets. Tablet case, another great gift. Yeah, absolutely, because everyone has one. And I think it just ma it makes using everyday items 
nicer. Is that mm. a silly thing to say? You know, I, I made myself my, my laptop cover and every time I put my laptop in, it just smile. You know, yeah. it's just nice to have those handmade and things also, around. Um, my husband and I have very different tastes in fabric. And some of the girlier ones, like the Tildes, mm. he doesn't want them everywhere because yes. it's like, oh, you know, a man yeah. does live here, Tash. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but a man didn't make it all, did he? <laughs> I did. Um, <laughs> but it just is an extra excuse to use yeah. up my favourite fabrics. Yeah, and gives it some gives those things that can be quite utilitarian some personality, doesn't yeah, it? Absolutely. Just make, and make them your own with the thing with the fabric you love. Creative goods are sold out. To tell you that we were oh. short on that, but we sorry. will still use it. Yeah. 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 yeah, sorry. Should we make stuff? Yes, let's Yay! make some stuff. Yay! Um, so. The the cutting and everything is really really simple, and of course you can use the use the template. Um, there's there is quite a bit of cutting involved because you've even though it's not very big, you've got a lot of little yeah. pieces. Um, but the the instructions are so clear um, of how to do that. So I'm going to do just the background pieces first, just to show you how those are done, and then if I've got some, I can show you the layout once I've made okay. um, yeah. the block. So the, these are just very simple cut from, so I cut strips um, of fabric and then sub cut them into squares. Right. So you've got three different sizes and it's all... It's all in the book, it's isn't it? It's all in the booklet. So it's what you need the, for the hourglass box, what you need um, for the uh, background, backing, modding, binding, so on and so forth. So for the background, we've cut the strips and then cut the, sub cut them into squares. And then you need to... Um, cut them in half. So the largest one I'm sub cutting into quarter square triangles. I have to get this right because I think some are half and some are um, quarter. Okay. I'm just going to check again. These into quarter, yes. So we're just doing it in half and half again. So I'm going to position it so I can Going do this in with, with the ruler. with the big boy ruler here. Uh, this is the eight and a half by um, 24 and a half inch ruler. Yeah. I, I, I like this because you can fold your... When you get your fabric, you'll get it in half metres and the white in a metre, but it means that you can keep it folded selvage to selvage and cut your strips with this entire length of ruler. Yeah. It's a good one to have in your stash. Yeah, it's a great one to have. There are those certain ones that we see repeated on the shows quite a lot because they are... They're, they're good ones. What, those are squares. I'm they're squares, it. right? <laughs> Nearly, nearly. Don't, don't and then I'm going to do the same again. This is okay. in, into four. So If you're after this ruler, and it is a really handy one to have, £31.95. Uh, you were lucky enough, I believe, to find creative goods straight off. Yes, I did. Um, others of our, um, of our guests weren't so lucky. We've now introduced them to the wonderful world of creative goods, and they're going, oh... Oh, oh, I think I need to replace my rulers. Yeah. So start off as you mean to go on. You are investing in your... In your craft, aren't you? you yes. Know? And the thing with Creative Grids is that it's got that inbuilt non-slip grip, which just makes cutting so much easier. So much easier. And they're, and they're really sturdy. They're really well made. And they will last you. So Yeah, if you look after them. One of those, them. like, with um, clothes, you know, cost per, yeah, cost per wear, yeah, cost yeah. per use of Absolutely. your ruler. It pays for itself in no buy time. Buy cheap, buy twice. That's it. Because you will want to upgrade. So just go straight for the good ones straight away. Uh, half the book is gone. Well done. Oh. If half the stock, not like half the book, like you get the full <laughs> that would book. Would be terrible. <laughs> Just you know, half the instructions make up I the rest know, of it yourself. It. And <laughs> you get the full book. Half the stock has gone. So for the um, blocks themselves, um, we're cutting the little triangles out. So like we said, there is the template. Yes. Um, in the book there. Now I will just say in the instructions it says you have to cut 48 strips to make 48 triangles. Clearly that's not uh, correct. A, a small typo. Yes, yeah, small typo. So I, I think it's only two strips that you need okay. to cut all those triangles. That was with me using the ruler, right. but if you're uh, clever with your template then it would be about the same yeah. I think. Um, but don't go and cut 40, you know, always read through. Don't go and cut 48 well, you might not have enough fabric to cut 48 strips. That's a lot of fabric. It's a lot of strips. And you, you read it and you know that that's, yeah. that's yeah, yeah. you know, a small error. So um, just ignore that. And the fact that you have to cut 48 triangles is correct. Yes, yes. OK. So the nice thing about using the ruler is it's so um, 
simple and straightforward. I know that I've got my two and a half inch strips and I've just layered them on top of each other here. Nice. So I'm cutting four triangles at once. Okay. So it does make it really, really quick. Um, and then I just line it up with the two and a half inch strip measurement on the ruler and then I can just go ahead and cut. So if you're using your template, I would angle it the same way and cut to, you know, you can cut your template out of plastic or thicker cardboard or something like yeah. that. Um, alternatively, if you, you're not comfortable, you can draw the lines on and cut them out by hand. That's fine. So I'm going to cut this way and this way. I'm going to manoeuvre myself. But you're going to want me out, out, aren't you? Yes, just slightly. I don't want any accidents there. So it's only that first cut you need to do like that. After that, you're just moving the ruler. And then cutting around. away. No dog cutting. ears on this, which I love. Um, because that confuses me with the triangle. Yeah, it's not got one, lie. one end it does, one end it doesn't. Yes. But that actually helps with the... Um, with the placement, doesn't it? Yeah, when it with comes together. Things up. Yeah, it does help a lot. Creative Grids are a company that um, are quilters making for quilters. So that's the difference, isn't it? That's the big thing, yeah. is that actually they really, they, they get it. And I will just say, something like this print is um, a joy for um, quilters, you know, because when you're doing patchwork, when you're cutting something up, obviously it totally changes the, yes. the pattern. But what's nice is if we can look at the repeat on here, um, you've got something in every space of the of the fabric. So you've got something to take the eye. Yes, and that you've got the different scales in there. So you've got the, sm you know, little berry, even these, is it mm. cow, cow parsley? Parsley, yeah. There you go, yeah. cow parsley. I know a little bit about plants. <laughs> these lovely flowers. Garden's and then question these, time. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Don't quiz big me flowers. too much. Yeah, big, big flowers. flowers. Yeah. Sideways flowers. Side yes, you know, very so common you get, sideways flower. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful sideways flower another sideways flower so you've got the different views different perspectives different sizes different colors it's like you've got everything in there and there's very little with no print no, on absolutely. do you see what I mean you've got this shadow in the background these beautiful leaves so it's really making the most of, of what the, I love about this print uh you know you used to get those Victorian um, studies, didn't you? Yes, of prints. yes. And that's what this harks back to for me, that line drawn, but with that modern twist, this gorgeous ochre in the background. Yeah, and the little love, butterflies love, love as it. well. So this would be, you know, it would be a nice one for fussy cutting in terms of keeping things yeah, central, but, mm. but you don't but you don't need to. And no. I like a print that's like that. It's just really easy to use. And so you get the full effect of it, but, you know, chopping things up. And I think when people are looking at fabric, it's something to bear in mind. Yeah, What's it going to look like when it's in a tiny little, you know, a tiny little piece? And so this fabric Gorgeous. works very well. Gorgeous for this is pattern. the answer to that. As does that one. Yes. Because you've got the flowers they and the leaves. They both work really well, yeah, don't they? They do. Uh, Laurie in Suffolk says, Good morning, Natasha and Lucy. Missed the sat uh, the Sato shows. I'm not sure. Don't know. Uh, my birthday was Thursday, 28th. Been celebrating with family. Going to treat myself today. Day. Oh, happy birthday, Oh, uh, Happy Laurie. birthday. Lots of birthdays at the moment. It's yes. clearly a popular month. Yeah. Um, yes. And Geraldine says, morning, ladies. Uh, you two are the cat's whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> Geraldine. Don't you start oh, as well. Geraldine. <laughs> oh. Well, I know. I've also got producer Paul saying, well, if you don't cut the dog ears off, it's a Let's bit rough. It. Oh, no. Awful. I know. They're coming thick and fast Awful. this morning from producer Paul. So I'm going to ignore everybody and just carry on. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. There are different ways, you know, lots of different ways that you can put this um, together. Yes. So I'm going with that as an, as an option. Nice. And then have I got two of those? I might do one. Opposite. Oh, you see, look, suddenly that pink comes out from the yes. butterfly, doesn't it? It's matched yeah. beautifully, isn't it? So there are different ways that you can put it together, but what I would... I should have ironed that. Apologies. Uh, it's all right. Thank I can, you. I can, uh, Those I two need a bit of an iron. Um, that was me just cutting the strips. Yeah, so yeah. Excuses, you, excuses, Brennan. When you're looking at the pattern, I can show you on here as well, you want to have that part because this is making up the hourglass either of those really in this one i made it the blue um but you ideally you want these triangles here to go in with the background so they blend in uh, so oh, that you've got this shape standing right. out i mean you can make di a different pattern with it and use 
you know, a bolder fabric for those points. But if you want it to be the same, you need to bear in mind these two need to be your background um, fabric. It is a bit easy to get carried away and just keep, you know, putting the prints. That's what, you know, even when I was making it, I was getting a bit carried away with myself. So you need oh, to keep ooh. the the background oh, ones. Oh, nice. Look at this. Controversial. So you're building up that, building up that shape like that. So oh, I'm, very I'm just nice. I'm do one like that and one like that if I get time. Oh, so. I like, so we're doing alternates. Yeah, so you could do alternates. I mean, you know, you, you really just can have a play and see and see what you like, which colour you want to stand out. God, they are, they look so different, oh, don't they? they? Do and look then look so at different. here, you've got that white bing. Yes, works beautifully with that print. Oh, I don't know which I prefer. I'd have to do alternate. Yeah, but it's nice to have a to have a mix. And actually, she you had used that social climb print that has a lot of the background, so it looks like she'd used a solid, but it wasn't. It oh, was the that, print. yeah, it's that's the, the Anna Maria because of the fabric Horner. has that uh, background in it. Is that why you chose yeah. this? Yeah, because I did love that fabric. Anna Maria Horner fan, fan girl. You, yeah. We had that by the half meter with the yellow background. Uh, I don't know if we still got that. Yeah. Beautiful. Both colours. Beautiful. Of that one are, are gorgeous. Um, right. Oh, so then no, that's go. okay. So, um, the great thing about the book, you know, she's got little um, guides and little tips. So it's a all learning book through. as well. Yes, it is. And so she's talking about um, setting it on point. So, like you said, you might look at that and go, "Oh, I'm not quite sure how that's put together." Yeah. And then you've got a very oh, nice. clear... Look at yeah. that. Gosh, that's super clear. Very, very clear diagram there. Now, of how it's laid out. Carolyn Forster, to give you some background, she uh, regularly contributes to the magazines, our sister magazines. So here at Sewing Quarter, we're not a standalone company. We, we are under the immediate media umbrella, which means that we also have sister um, magazines, which is great because it means that we've got a wealth of knowledge and experience there. And Carolyn contributes regularly to those. You'll often mm -hmm. see her quilts in those magazines. Um, so, you know, she's used to... Giving, giving clear instructions yes. um, because that's well, mm -hmm. it's her job, yes. quite frankly. Uh, She's very beautiful. good at it. So yes, very A star, yes. tick, VG. Well done. Uh, the... <laughs> but it makes, it make, you know, it, 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 that's what's really, he it's really helpful yeah. to have those things and to see. And if you're not familiar with On Point, it can seem a little... It's not a, just a, a ballet odd. term. No, it's not just a ballet term. It does make me think of my cousin who got points and I was very jealous. Oh, there was no way that I was I was lifting nearly six foot of me up on the <laughs> points. That was never going to happen. Uh, now, so this is a far more comfortable way of going on points. Yes. Now, um, you know, I said that half the book, over half the book had gone. Five left if everybody checks out. I mean, oh, they wow. are really going quick. Has anybody out there made the Ollie the Octopus? Because that's also in this book, and I am a little oh, bit obsessed. Like if you that, have, then can you uh, email in that photo, which is um, studio at sewingquarter.com. Message from... Debbie, hello, Debbie. She's watching with a cup of tea in bed. Oh, that's very nice. civilised. That's where you should it? be on a Saturday yeah, morning, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. In bed with a cup of tea. I've got a limb sip in my cup <laughs> oh, today. It's my N cup so that nobody else steals it. Yes. You know. N for no, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so um, the block is made up of um, half square. Uh, Triangles. Yes. So um, we're just going to sew the triangles together. So you could do this, you know, with another method of making the um, half square triangles where you sew either side of the line or you sew all the way around there the edge. There are lots, aren't there? There are lots of ways. And this is just, you know, your standard, you literally sewing two triangles together. Right. Um, but this, but like I said, this is a great way of practicing your seam, getting all your seams nice and straight, you know, getting your points matching. So um, handily, because we've had the ruler, we've got that dog ear um, cut off so we can line those up. You know, we know easily where, where, where our seam line's going to be. But the thing about this is, so long as you're consistent, your blocks will go together. Okay, okay. Perfectly consistency well. Consistency is so the key. It's not that it has to be a true quarter inch or a scant quarter inch. You just, whichever one you're going to choose, you're going to Stick use your quarter inch foot just. Okay. Get it straight and awesome. you will be fine. Do you chain piece these? Yes. 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 Because it's quicker and makes it much easier. 
So you so. would cut out... So, OK, my question to you is, do you cut this all out, lay it all out, yeah. and then do you sort of have them to start? Or do you do a block at a time or the whole thing? I sort of stack them on top of each other and do just you? do a whole... Yes. So it's the just, stacking, that's because otherwise yes, I run out of space and, and I need Go Go Gadget arms yeah. to reach them. <laughs> <laughs> I just have it stacked up, all the boxes stacked up next to my um, sewing machine and then and just, go. yeah, just go. And are you still loving your excellent 680? And you can, yes, I adore yes. it. It's so quick and easy to use. The other thing with this is you can just do, you know, do a whole load of the background with the, you know, and then do all of those. So you know how many that you've got to do. Yes. Just get them all done at yes. once and then lay it out. You don't have to have, You'll have laid find it out your first. own Yes, your and, own I, and way. I don't think there is, you know, there's not a right way or a wrong way of doing it. It's just um, what makes sense to you. Lucy, I've been doing something controversial at home. You've been controversial. Yeah. And, and that is making my dog's patchwork quilt. Not but making your dogs make them. No, 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 no not like make them because like their <laughs> paws get in the way and it's quite tricky. Um, but I use my overlocker because they're going to be hard wearing. Ah, yeah. So, and actually, I find it's. I don't think that's quite. Is that, not, is that okay? okay? Is that an accepted form? I mean, I have to be honest. I don't have an overlocker, and I've not used an overlocker, so it's not something. But I'm it really just familiar means with, for me I'm because sure. it's going to have. Well, okay. When my great Dane greets you in the morning, he yes. always has to bring you a bed, oh. like an entire bed. That's nice. So it needs to be solid and very well made. Yes. It, it's going to get some some Eric love. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's why I've been overlocking, and I didn't know if that was something you were going to throw your hands up in horror and say, oh. Natasha, no. That's come on threaded. So I'll just stop there where it's come on threaded and just do the one. Okay. So I'm just going to um, give these a press. I can do that. Whilst you do that, I'm going to go look at some, uh, okay, some okay. fabrics. Yes. Because uh, you need to know which ones to choose. Right. OK, I'll leave you to press those. Let's have a look. Oh, you know what else has been super popular this hour? The wadding. Now, warm and white. This is needle punched cotton. So it's 100% cotton. It's natural, it's really rather gorgeous. It's under 10 pounds, happy days, 8.95. Uh, not only that, this is your baby size, sizable, I would say, over a meter there, a meter and a half in length. So, um, it is a big baby, isn't it, for that? Um, but the beauty of this, not only is it needle punched and it's natural, that is a big plus, but it's the fact that it's white, it's super white, which means that it doesn't dull your colours. So when you're working with something that has that bright white, then it's not going to dull it, it's not going to take away... If you fall in love with the fabric, when you patchwork it and you then quilt it, you want it to still be that colour. You don't want to use one that's sort of a creamy colour because it will dull it. You know, there's, there's no doubt about it, it will dull it. So get the fabric effect that you wanted in the first place. So that's that, under £10 and excellent. Um, now, here we go. Two and a half metres of fabric, yes please, with thread. Thank you very much. So, a half a metre of your Dashwood Studio. Isn't that gorgeous? Vibrant and modern. I do like that an awful lot. If you got the ochre bundle from the earlier show, that also would go beautifully with it. So that's your Dashwood. You're also going to get your ebony linear in there, half a metre of that as well. And again, it's, it's softened because it's the linear. It's not a hard colour, it's softened. And also, you've got those dark colours and that crosshatch in there to pick it up. That's why it was, you know, there's method in our madness. And then your antique blue, vintage blue. Oh, why do I always call it antique? It's in my head now, sorry. Vintage blue there gives it that softness. And then, yes, your optical white making it all go pink. That's why you need to grab your warm and white, in my humble opinion. There we go. And your thread. Or oh, they're $22.95. That's fab. If you want the confetti by itself, maybe you did buy the earlier bundle with the ochre in and you've gone, actually, yeah, that's going to work a treat. Then, um, then grab this. Half a metre of this looks like this. It's £6.50 per half a metre. It is by Dashwood. There you go. Producer Paul, have we got that earlier bundle that I can just show it with if you're after it by the half metre? The ochre bundle. Do you think... Shall we? 
Okay. So six pound fifty Dashwood Studio Confetti Multi Flowers Fabric for a half a meter. You're looking at six pound fifty. That's how much you get for your half meter. If you want the ochre bundle, which goes with this beautifully as well, look at that. Um, so you've got that's a, a creamy colour on the left, just so that you know that's not just a gap in our wallpaper. Um, Nine pound forty-five for half a metre of each of those different three colours. But that is another bundle that will go beautifully with this. I mean, that, that's pure accident, but I like a happy accident. That's all good. Excellent. Uh, so that's that one. Uh, oh, this is very lovely too. Lucy, are you using the plain fabric, the plain pink? I would use that is that for binding? binding? Yeah. Good. Just hadn't seen it. Wondered what we were going to use it for. There we go. This is your botanical exotic flower. And it's upside down. There we go. Those butterflies are flying in the right direction now. Gorgeous. And we've teamed that with, again, because you've got that drawn detail in there, we've gone with the linear because then you've got that lovely line effect there but it's it's not hard so that's in berry and then you've got your deep orchid that's what Lucy's going to use to bind and then a meter so half a meter of each of those and then a meter of your optical white just to make everything pop and that's what makes everything stand up and you've got your thread oh hi there Lucy how are you doing I'm not still ironing I've just <laughs> So well, many you other are. ones to get. Well, I mean, I am. Yes, that's true. Very true. I am. But I was just but the other uh, ones doing those other ones. Nice. So are you done? Do you want that away? I am done for now. We will need it. Okay. In a little while. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll just put the eye in there. We'll leave it. So out. I've just trimmed those down. So you can see the difference there. I've got the dog ears from the pointed yes. sections, which depending on. Um, the type of block you're sewing, sometimes those dog ears can be useful for okay. matching things up. So it's it's worth not necessarily cutting those off straight away. Okay. You want to try and match see your things and helpful. see if that's helpful, because in certain instances, it's actually more helpful to have them sticking out and you can match them with the bit that you're mm. sewing. So it just depends. So um, you might just want to have a play with that and no okay. make a note of that, depending on what you're doing. But for this, we can just cut them off because we just want squares yes um so then it's just like a full patch really nice. so we're just going to sew those together it's so actually come together quite quickly yeah isn't it? so you i'm looking at it on point but you know essentially it's square yeah so depending on how you've pressed your seams if you think about it you can press one one way and one the other i so have to can... actually put them kind of together I can't yes. I still can't see that in my head there are some things yeah. I can see some things I can't and I, I yeah. still have it takes me a little while but it's worth doing because actually it 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 really does make a difference it really does make a difference when it comes to matching up your points and yeah so it's just these two are going to be the same going in and these two going out, out so that you can um, put them together so by that I just mean when you come to put these together you can see there when you fold it back because you've got the seam going yeah. one way and the seam going yeah. the other way that that's going to meet up. They just up. slot, don't they? Just it's they discreet, do. They just but they, they slot do. together, so it makes it easier. I've got a message. Marie says, Tash, can you uh, make to sell out of the book? Thank you. Um, I can't see why not. Uh, it doesn't have a specific angel policy on there, but I can't see why not. There's there's nothing to say. There's nothing to say not. Uh, let me just double check that. But I'm pretty sure it is, you know, you can. I think sometimes they say for personal use only, don't they? Just. Yeah, it doesn't. I, uh, but uh, a lot of times that's referring to the pattern, not the. Um, yes, in terms of you can't sell yeah. the pattern, but if, if you've made it, then yes, I don't see why not. It doesn't say anything in there, but. Yeah. Yes. Share that, Ollie the octopus love. Uh, Kathleen says, has the long hanging quilt on the back wall been demonstrated on the show? If so, then when? Yes, this is our Bargello quilt over here. When was it on? She's called, do you remember? 
Lucy, did you do that one? No, I didn't, but it is really striking. It's isn't very it? striking, yeah. isn't it? Bargello quilts are beautiful. You get what, lots of what is Bargello? What's them. that? It's, it's like, it's the strips, but by uh, varying the width, and sometimes the colour, you just get these different um, effects and it kind of cr creates like a curve, doesn't it, on this one? Um, but you can get, yeah, it's like waves and all kinds of different things. OK, Producer Paul says if you search Bargello on our website, then um, it, will, it will come up. It'll tell you. Oh, there you go. So then you can find out how to make it. It's on our how to make. There you go. How to make a Bargello. So you've got all of that in your projects and guides bit. You see, I always go on to just the buy -e bit, onto the shop bit, but actually there's so much more to our website, I forget. Yeah, if you click on learn, there's projects and guides. So there's guides that have things like how to do certain stitches and things like that, and then there are projects. So how to make all those beautiful. Yay! Ding. And there's the Bargello. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, Susan says, can you explain what needle punched means, please? Yes, I can. So in the wadding, when it's put together, the, the needles, um, they will punch through the wadding. Now, what that does is that means that actually when you, when you put it onto your fabric, it creates a slight grip, doesn't it? It doesn't move mm -hmm. around too much. I'm sure there are other reasons that they do it as well. They also, they do it to hold the... Um, most wadding has, has like a scrim inside of it. So you just see the sort of fluffy cotton, but there's like a, a layer um, that holds it together. Um, very, it's very difficult to explain, sort of like, like a fishnet tight sort yeah, of thing, yeah. but ever so, ever so fine. You, you can't feel it. And if you separate it, you can get it out, but um, it's very hard to see. But then it's needle punched and it holds it together. So it's holding the fibres right. okay. to the scrim. Yeah. So as it's punching, it means that the wadding is more hard wearing. It's not going to all disperse. You know, in old quilts, the wadding wasn't made like that and it, and it wasn't held together. So you'd get, you know, like, like those horrible eventually. duvets where it all ends up down the bottom of the duvet. It's like, <laughs> it wouldn't be like that. It would all clump and tear apart. Um, whereas these ones haven't. So it means that your quilting distance generally can be slightly um, further apart. Yes. Than traditionally you would have to, he you know, heavily quilt something in order to keep those fibres bonded. It's also, but from a, because you, you don't see that, that inner working. No. Um, what you will find as an end user, if you mm. will, is that actually when you, when you put it down to baste, it doesn't move as yeah. much. Because it, it's it, like it's got little tiny grippers on yeah, it. Yeah, it does. It works really well. And that's with. why it is worth seeing if you've got a needle punch wadding. You can't always see it. In a polyester wadding, it's, you don't get it so no. much. But in, in one that's a cotton or a cotton blend, you will um, feel it. And so the top is flatter mm. and the side where the needles have gone through um, creates like little yeah you know te a, te a texture yeah. so it's so it's rougher so like you say it, it, grips. it grips so you want that going down and you want your needle going in the same, same way, way as it as, was needle punched. and also then you won't get that um you don't get some bearding that's yeah. it bearding yeah um susan thank you that was a really good question actually yes because we just yeah. sometimes we just assume yeah can't assume. Got and minutes. it doesn't. And I mean, most or you know, modern thing they have all been needle punched. So you might just not have noticed it says it's been needle yeah. punched, but they they will have been in the manufacturing process. Okay, so very quickly then. Um, so I've got my two halves. Um, I was chain piecing, so I've got a little uh, thread in between. And then again, I'm just doing the same thing where the seams are going to both sides. So I just match that up. And I'll sew this quickly, and then talk about on point. Yes. Because I not, the ballet turn. not the ballet not turn. the ballet turn. not the ballet um it says setting on point so it gives you the little hints and tips so even if you don't have lucy with you which is sad <laughs> but not everyone can have her you just have me on and in the we've background. got her today uh, <laughs> we're happy to share while she's here yeah. uh, then you do get those little those little hints tips and bits of advice yeah. which is so lovely. by butting it up you can see how that makes your seams yes um go together really nicely like that. Ta -da! So then on point is where you're setting the rows sort of at an angle. So you start to build up the quilt and we take those triangles that we cut earlier and you start um, positioning them so that your blocks become end up 
like this. So you've got a side triangle and a block. Doing that the wrong way. Okay, right. And I'm a side triangle and a block. So you can see like that, and then you'd have a triangle um, in the corner. It's actually a smaller one than that, but I can't find it. So you have one there. Um, and then you put these together. Now, what she's done and what's so great about this pattern is these are slightly oversized. So when you come to sew them to your block, you think, oh, it's too big. Yes. That's not right. Panic. But it's right. She's very, very clever. What you want to do is match up your straight edges so that that's straight. And then you've got overlap there, but it means that you're not going to lose any of your points. So the finished uh... result, you can see how nicely all those points... I've not lost anything no. at the side because that is can be tricky. So by making these triangles oversized, you can just trim down the edge of your quilt nice. later on and nice. not have to worry about losing your points. She knows so her stuff. She, she knows her onions. Does. She does. Our... Definitely yes. Does. Yeah. yes. It's a wonderful book. Excellent. Highly recommend it. Um, okay, the next question I'm going to ask then mm -hmm. about this yes. is how on earth do I press that without getting lots of bulk? There's a couple of different things you can do. You can press that seam open, which is what I tend to do a lot, um, because despite me fiddling about now, it is easy. <laughs> so you can just press that seam open mm -hmm. and that's going to um, reduce the bulk in the centre there because you've got it uh, going different ways. Or you can unpick these seams slightly and have it spinning, which is where you have, you know, this would be going this way and they'd be spinning around like a pinwheel. Oh, I quite like that. And then I get upset, you're yes. not actually going to see it. Well, yes, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But that's a really lovely you, effect. I do see pictures and in the no back of people's it. quilts sometimes. I think, oh, that's so They're beautiful. Pretty, yeah. It's like embroidery when someone's really neat on the back. And you go, how do they do that's that? That's not my embroidery. Yeah. Um, but the, personally, the, I think the quickest way is, you know, to go like that. Sometimes seams... Depend, you know, when I come to sew the next block, for example, they might spin naturally and you can just do that. You don't need to unpick oh, depending okay. on yeah. the block that you've made. Um, but, you know, some a lot of people do like to do that, to have them all going the different ways. But I think by pressing it open, because, you know, you've got such quality wadding, you don't need to worry about, you know, and the thread is really strong. You don't need to worry about, um, you know, that seam not being any stronger by pressing yeah. it open. Really. Okay. So. And then, of course, don't worry. You see, this would be my other panic. I'd be like, oh, yes. oh, but that you need that quarter of an inch there. That is your quarter of an inch seam allowance so that you can be, again, yeah. on point there. Yeah, and, so, and when you're sewing this to your next piece, if you do it from that side, you, I mean, you can see very clearly because I've pressed the seam open, that's where my point is. Yes. So I want to sew Nice. Through that point, and then not going to lose it. So anything. all these little things just help, yes. isn't it? And, and then you've got to notice them before absolutely. they can help you. And practicing on things like this with these little pieces just, you know, makes means you can refine that, and yeah. then you can take that onto a bigger quilt, take everything that you've learned. Why have I got a square? The, because How those are the squares. Uh, so it just you just carry on. Uh, that might make up your next block. So you're just staggering the. Um, hourglass ones with the square ones and that's getting this sort of diamond Beautiful. setting so that when you then when you turn it around but they meet you know they they meet, uh, they meet and it's what's nice about having the diagram as well is you're not sometimes you're not sure where does that go where does that go you know you've got another triangle there yeah i would have to i would have to sit there and, and work it out yeah so it'd be you know it's slightly offset you'd have another block and then a triangle so if you've grabbed the book, congratulations. There were only a handful last time we looked because it went super fast. So almost sold out. But you can see there's your block and then you've, all, you've got sort of a row of your squares spun to be a, you know, a diamond or whatever. Mm. And then you've got the, those edges are going to be those triangles. That's really clear, isn't it? Yeah, and I will say for anybody um, at home that's watching, you know, if, if you've got blocks of your own and you'd like to set them on point and you're not sure about working out the measurements for the triangles because they do need to be bigger than the square yeah another option is to make that a square sew it together and then trim it trim back it. afterwards oh okay do you see what i mean so it yes. could all be squares but you're just sewing it together without extra squares yeah. there and then you trim it off it is wasteful of fabric though you could then use, use that for somewhere something else. else okay um but that's you know if you're a beginner beginner that's an easier way than, work, than working with triangles as well. Nice. So, We've got five minutes. Yeah. What would you like to do? Um, I'll just talk about uh, quilting. Go um, on then. Quickly. And, and Teddy. Yes. 
And did we have any pictures of cats? Cats and quilts. No, okay. No, cats on quilts is my, one of my favourite things. Um, so she's done a, a decorative machine stitch. Carolyn's done yeah. a decorative ma machine stitch all over her um, quilt, which gives a really lovely texture. I didn't want to go over the hourglass um, things, partly because I was quite proud of all the points, and I thought it's just going to look like a, I've not made, if, had such lovely points. If you hadn't, <laughs> yeah, I might have done then... that to disguise them. Sometimes I do do that, you know, if I'm honest, where I've made a little mistake, I'll just make sure a quilting line goes through that. So it just, I love and use honesty. a slightly thicker thread yeah, as well. Okay. So it really, you know, really distorts And it. maybe have some intersecting lines just to really cover it all up. Worst comes to worst, bit of a plique done, fine. Um, but there's lots of ways to cover up mistakes. But oh, I just quick thought, message, very, yes. very quickly. Uh, Mary, just give us a call, free to do so. 0800 112 Mary. So just give us a quick call. Won't cost you a penny to do so, and uh, they can help you out. Sorry, as well. That's OK. So I just um, picked some decorative stitches, and I tried to pick ones that would sort of coordinate with the pattern that's in yeah, the fabric. Yeah, I like. So I there's, like. like, these little things sort of reminded me of, like, a cross-stitch. I went with a cross-stitch one. And then this one um, was very similar to this... Uh, Flower, you know, it's the same yes. shape there yes, as that isn't it? flower. Yes. So I think it's quite nice um, to, to have it blend, you know, so it stands out a little bit and blends in. And then also I thought by doing the three lines, it makes it look a, bit, a little bit lace-like almost. Oh, having it was that sort so of a, pretty. A pattern on there. But there are lots of different ways that you could quilt this. I was looking for a stitch that would look like sand. This sounds so silly. You know, to have it going through the the hourglass, like, oh, yeah, like sand. And then I just thought, I haven't really got time to mess, <laughs> mess around. I guess actually like all it would but, be, you know, you'd have to do like a straight stitch yeah, and then just have, little Or even little, little angle, you know, if you were hand quilting, that would be lovely, you know, to have it sort of pouring yeah. through and you could do it like, you know, do it like that, get some really nice effects on there. So oh, wow. lots of possibilities. But that's why they, this sort of, Making smaller quilts like this is great to get you thinking about what kind of quilting you like. And you might try something and go, mm -hmm. actually, I'm not, as, I'm not as keen on that, but you haven't done it on a whole full-size quilt. Do you know what else? So. If, you did this, if you did half again, yes. you know that would sit actually beautifully on a baby change mat. Yes, it Wouldn't would. it? So you've got, yeah. you, you would have something really beautiful it yes. could go in the wash if needs be. Yeah. And you could do sort of three and make a runner or... Yeah. Oh, yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. So lots of ideas, lots of ways to use them. Oh, Leslie sent us a picture. Oh, <laughs> hi, Ollie the Octopus. <laughs> z -z -z -z. So cute. Octopi. Octopi, possibly. Not sure. I don't know. They're adorable. Aren't they brilliant? Really cute. And I'll tell you what, little kids will love those. You could put a squeaky toy in the middle. You could. Um, uh, but then also, because little hands can get round the, round the limbs, round mm. the tentacles. Mm. You have to be careful they're not too long if it's a baby. That's my only... Yeah. Yes. Just be careful. Maybe toddler. Slightly older child, yes. I think. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Safety first. Uh, right. Uh, check out your baskets. Yeah, you're back in an hour. I am. Yes. Do you quilt block? Now, uh, we're stepping it up a level, aren't we? We're yeah. going intermediate. We are intermediate, yes. Why is it yeah. intermediate? There's a lot of... Um, it, I'm doing a pattern from a book and all of the patterns are, are traditional with sort of a twist, Ooh. which I really, really like. Um, in fact, all of the patterns, I kept thinking, oh, I want to make that one, I want to make that one, which is lovely. Um, but the... It's, it's not necessarily that it's about the accuracy. Okay. So they're intermediate. Some of the blocks are, are more complicated and it's about their, their accuracy with these blocks. So. so if you're after a book that's fun and has lots of things that you can get done in a day or a weekend or, you know, you just want to use up your scraps, then go for the Carolyn Foster. If you're after intermediate, stay tuned for Lucy at 11. Yes. Excellent. Thank you ever yeah, so much. Thank you. Now, remember, text to win. Yes. This finishes at um, 11.59 tomorrow, Sunday night. Um, but you still have a chance to win an Elna 240EX sewing machine. Who doesn't need an extra sewing machine? Find me someone that doesn't and I'll tell them they do. Um, text sew to 66777. Just a normal standard rate. And uh, check out T's and C's on the website. One entry per person. There you go. Excellent. Let's
let's look at the confetti. The confetti. Let's have a look over here. Um, gosh, rapidly running out of time. Now, the confetti. Don't forget to get your thread. Beautiful confetti. I love the vibrancy of the colours. Just the bright, happy colours. Happy days. Dashwood Studio design there. And then we've popped your ebony linear there just to coordinate in with the pattern that you've got there. You can see the sort of... Yep, all good. And then you've got your... Oh, I want to say antique blue. It's not vintage. Vintage blue. I always get that one wrong. Every time. And a metre of your optical weight. That's what that bundle is looking like for $22.49. And uh, now, which has been most popular, Producer Paul? This one now. Oh, it's been a close run thing. Um, this is your exotic. And it is very gorgeous. Look at those. $22.49 for your exotic flower quilt bundle with that bright white, which you've got then to pick up with your um, optical white. You've also got your berry linear there. Very nice. And your deep orchid. Really super pretty colours with this one. Um, and then you've got that striking sort of mustardy, yellowy, ochre colour going on there. And your thread. There you go, all in there. Uh, if you'd like to email us and get in touch, there you go, that, you could do that. Uh, <laughs> now, also, lots of you going for this. I cannot stress this enough. If you're going for those lighter coloured fabrics, you've got a lot of white in here, you've got a metre of white in there, then make sure that it's not dulled by using, um, you know, a, a naturally coloured um, wadding. Now, this is natural. It is your cotton, but it is also white. Lots of multi-buyers on here. It is needle punched, which uh, we explained what that actually means. But and, uh, mm, you can't actually see You can... You can't see it through there. Uh, right, we are frantically running out of time. Next up, you've been asking for it. It's uh, my tablet stand. So we'll see you in just a moment. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. There are many different ways you can buy from us here at The Sewing Quarter. You can order from us by calling our free phone number at 0800 112 4433 and talk to the team at our UK-based call centre. Alternatively, there are other ways you can buy from us. You can go online and shop through our website at www.sewingquarter.com. You can even watch the show there and shop as you go. You can check out as many times as you like throughout the day and only pay a small fee of £2.95 postage and packaging for the whole day. We also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all products, excluding custom-cut fabric. Our friendly UK-based team will help guide you through every step. So we're going to show you how to do a backstitch. Now a backstitch is a great one to use when you haven't got a sewing machine available um, but you need to repair or fix a garment and the backstitch is a really strong stitch to do that with. First of all you need to start with the wrong side of the fabric first. So I'm just going to place my needle through to bring it through through to the front and then you're going to go backwards. So I'm going to do quite big stitches here so you can see what I'm doing. So that's the first stitch. Now this time, you're gonna come and bring your needle through, but the same distance as your stitch. And then you're gonna go into the first hole that you came out, and then go th back through to the back. And then I'm gonna come all the way over again, the same distance, and then through again, and just keep repeating that process. This is my final stitch now. So as you can see, there's my row of back stitches. And if I just turn that over for a second, you can see that it's almost as if it's double stitched along the back. So you can see it's a really secure stitch to do when you haven't got a sewing machine to hand.
now, welcome back. I'm Natasha McCarty and uh, this is my hour. Here's the thing. Um, oh gosh, it was a little while ago now. I was um, helping my sister-in-law out at um, This Morning Live over at the NEC. And I saw these tablet rests and I saw the price at them and I kind of, wow, really? That much? Gosh. So I went away and I thought, I'd really like to make something like that. I wonder if I could work out how to make them. So I did. And it turned out it's super, super easy to do it. And I've made them on the shows. We often have our tablets just resting on it. The beauty of them is, if I can just show you, is that... You can then, you can sort of wiggle it around. So whatever angle you're sitting at, you can have it at exactly the angle that you want. Um, and it's just an extra splash of color in your room. So we use these a lot on the shows. I use these at home all the time. Um, I have one in every room. And so then there's always something pretty that the, that the tablet can rest on. Now, we haven't brought these to wear before because firstly, we needed to write the instructions because a lot of you have been saying, oh, you know, it's, how do I do it? Super easy. So I explained to, you know, Bex Reed, who we often have on the shows, she um, just said, how do you make them, Tash? So I explained and then she wrote the technical bit. So that's what she does. She's technical editor for Simply Sewing. So she wrote down the instructions so they were easy to follow. But we had to source for you uh, some kind of stuffing. So what we've got, um, first time ever, are these. Now, we've got two different types of filling and here's why. These ones here, uh, these are food grade plastic pellets. They are a different shape to the other ones that we've got. So these are brand new in today. These are great for your tablet rest. The other ones are great for your door stoppers. These ones are great. Just the different shape means that they slide. They're a larger size than the other pellets. So they've got sort of more volume. So for 6 95 you can grab your pure white poly pellets. What that means is when your child gets uh, tomato ketchup or something over your tablet rest, because, you know, that happens, uh, you can just bung it in the wash. Easy. Uh, that's the joy of using these. So brand, brand new today. We've finally sourced them. We've finally got them for you. Here they are, $6.95. And one of those will fill one of these, an absolute treat. And then you can just angle it however you like. And this is great. So you can have this on your, uh, on your bedside table or on your lap or, or wherever. Yes. Loving it. So that's that one. Now, what I would say is, these are the other ones. Now, the, oh, firstly, that just feels so amazing. Love that. Um, these ones are a slightly different shape. Now, these are actually medical grade plastic. So again, you know, lots of ways. You can use these to weigh down. If you're making teddy bears that you want to just sit, you can use these to weigh down your toys. Both of these you can use to weigh down your toys. But these are, I think, better if you want to make these. Because there's no reason it just has to be a, a tablet rest. These ones you can use just to make a doorstop, something like that. It's got that weight. Just throw it down. We don't have as many of these, but you can just use these to weight, weight down and I think makes a great door stopper. So I think for your bathroom or something, that's really lovely. Okay, so let's have a look at the bundles. So in the bundles, you will get um, half a meter of your fabric. And look, here they are. These are the instructions. Finally done, finally made, finally coming to you. Because you've been asking, you've been asking for it. So let's have a look at the stags. I think this one's gonna be very popular. That's my feeling on this. So for your stags, um, you can, you get half a metre, and when you see how wide it is, whoo -hoo, you can get at least three. There's enough material for at least three tablet rests out of this. So that's going to be what? And your thread and your instructions. That's smidge over it's what three pound thirty something per tablet rest and then you you do your filling or maybe you have one one as a tablet rest and one as a door stopper and then you still have lots of fabric left so there we go there's that one uh let's have a look at the stars next again under 10 pounds 
Now these styles, you can see we've we've had this for oh, for yonks. Love it. But this is this is a great fabric. It's really hard wearing, really durable. Now this is the one that's even on the instructions. There you go. So nine ninety five. You get the instructions with it. You get thread with it. There it is. Under ten pounds for this. Excellent. And then you decide what filling you want to pop in it. Uh, now nautical but nice. Here it is. Uh, kind of a faux patchwork going on here. Um, yeah, so this is the one that I made my door stopper out of. Just because they're the kind of colours that my son has in his room. And so that's really, really nice. And again, you know, if, it, if I was to do that for outside, I might eau de coat it. But again, it can be washed. Yeah, producer Paul says, even if it was £10 to make one, it would be great value, but... Sorry, there's threads all over it. Um, uh, yeah, you've got enough fabric to do an awful lot. Great Christmas presents. Great cri Christmas, birthday presents, anything like that. Absolutely fab. I'm so pleased that, you know, I was, I was really taken by surprise. Which one are we going for next, Paul? The anchor. Um, and, and really... You know, you really, you really seem to like it. So I was, I was, yeah, chuffed to bits because that's the first sort of own make, if you will. So here's your anchors. Again, look at that, nine ninety five. All your anchors there. I think that's going to look great in the bathroom as well. And again, your thread and your instructions. And then the last one. Hey. Award-winning director Mike, you said last time you wanted this fabric. Did you manage to get it? Oh no, because it's sold out. Right, but it's back. Here we go. Uh, this is this is from um, this is like a tapestry style one. This is your chest fabric, but the great thing about it is is that you can you can use either side of the fabric. So you could have two different two different ones, or you could do the handle in that and the main body like that. Or when you see how easy it is to make. 50-50, however you would like to do it, is entirely up to you. Hooray! Now, I did mention the eau de coat. I do love a bit of eau de coat, not going to lie. Here it is. Now, with your eau de coat, we use it on things like wash bags, stuff like that, because it turns your cotton fabrics into, well, basically gives them the properties of oilcloth. So it means it's Easy to sew with though, you don't need any different feet or anything like you might with oilcloth. But what it means um, is that you've got a waterproof fabric, which then means it, water just drips off. And you can see that was a normal, so that's how the normal cotton was. And then when it's coated, it gives it a gloss effect. Now, how glossy you want that is just how many layers of eau de coat you put on. It doesn't make it any more water resistant, it just improves the gloss. So if you want it just discreet, just put one on. But if you want more gloss, then do so. So that's that one. Doesn't have as many layers as that. You can see how glossy that one is. So that's up to you. But for fourteen ninety five, if you are doing something like an outdoor door stopper, then firstly, don't make the mistake I did. For my door stopper, I just I made out of tilde fabric, which wasn't the mistake. The mistake was that I didn't eau de coat it and I put rice in, which means that it's pretty much useless because, it, you know, it rained and then it gets wet and you've got to throw it away. So don't do that. Do this. If you've got the, um, if you've got the, if you're doing door stoppers, then go for the heavier, the heavier pellets is what I would say to you. Which are, uh, no, these ones aren't brand new today. These ones we've had before. It's the other ones. So these grey ones are great for door stoppers. And there's no reason why you can't do what I'm going to show you as a door stopper as well. I've seen those in some rather expensive shops, I have to say. Have we got a picture? Of the oh, yes, OK. The thing to mention, one thing to mention with this fabric is um, it's a looser weave. It's a, um, a thicker thread but it's a looser weave so there can be a little bit of fraying a few ways a few ways to overcome this firstly you can pinking shear it job done secondly if you're worried you can use fray check and this is what we've got so if you've got some of this it's 545 and it's great with anything that um, loves a little bit of a fray and some fabrics just do that's just how it is uh, but if you'd like that 
then do grab that. Um, the other thing to do is to, um, if you've got an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, then you can just do that around the edges. But there's your fray check and then you need not worry. And actually I love using that with my patchwork. If I've, if I've gone a little bit too close to a seam and I'm worried it's gonna fray and then come away, I'll use fray check. It's really handy just to have in your basket. Now, stags, very, very popular. We kinda knew it was gonna be. You can buy it by the half meter. Um, and let me show you that. So if you're after the stags by the half meter, here it is. Very, very popular. And by the, this is a really wide fabric, isn't it? What's that, 100 and, buh, 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 buh. it's not say. But it, it does feel, it does feel very wide. I'd feel like it's about 150, but don't quote me on it. Uh, now, the kit, of course, comes with the instructions and your thread. And then you pick which filling. We didn't put filling in because we didn't know whether or not you wanted to make the tablet rest um, or whether you wanted to do kind of door stoppers or whatever. But what I would say is that the basics are going to be the same. So you know what I was saying about fraying? Let me just show you. Different ways to stop your fabric from fraying. Up here, you can see it's pinked and then it's frayed, but it's going to stop there. If you don't, then let me just show you down the bottom. It will just continue to fray. And you can just see that there's a little bit of fray occurring down there. So if you're at all worried, just get your pinking shears and just, there you go. And then it's not going to fray. Or um, if, you have an, if you have a zigzag foot or a over edge stitch, or um, if you've got, Something like, because this is going to be slung around all over the place. I just overlock my edges. Job done. There you go. Okay, so how do we do it? How do we do it? Super, super easy. You cut yourself. If you don't cut yourself, that came out wrong. Be very careful. Health and, health and safety. You cut. Let's start that again, shall we? Cut your fabric. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, look, the instructions. This is why I didn't write the instructions. This is why uh, technical editor Bex Reed wrote the instructions, because I would have written cut yourself and that would be wrong. But these are the instructions there for you. Um, you can size this up, size this down, by the way, as well. So if you wanted to do yourself a little phone one, then you could. But in the instructions, it says, um, here we go. In inches, this is 20 inches, top to bottom there. This originally came out of a fat quarter. This was, I wanted to make this so that it came out of a fat quarter. So that's why it's kind of the width of your, the width of your fat quarter. And then I just went, okay, so what is half of that? So half of that is going to be, 10, so you've got 20 inches by 10 inches. Now, if you are using um, a pattern like this, you could do it so that you have 10 inches like that square, and then 10 inches the other side square, and then sew them together and then you'd have a contrast one. We might do that if we get time and show you what it looks like. Um, but this is super easy. You literally, oh, you've got to check out the basket this hour, apparently, very, very popular. Well, that's really nice. So what I'm gonna do is, and this is, this is my note for the stag fabric. If you've got the stab, stag fabric going that way, then you want to sew down those two sides. So there's your fold line sewn down those two sides. And that's what I'm going to do. I go from my folded line and sew down. When it comes down to seam allowance, meh, whatever you like. It's up to you. Entirely up to you. Oh, now, hang on. Lucy's been using this, hasn't she? It's got a quarter of an inch and I don't really want that. I should have changed my feet. What's that, sorry? Turn it on and off. 
says producer Paul. Don't you know where the on off in them. It's using different different machines. There we go. Oh, there we go. Now hang on. Let me just hand crank that and make sure that that is not gonna. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so. No, it's not going to let me do that with the foot. Oh, I've got to change the foot. Okay, whilst I do that, stock warning on which one? Oh, that one. Oh, gosh. Check out your baskets. Please do that. Make sure that you've got that. Don't miss out on that. Four left. Is that all we've got? Gosh, okay. All right, now do check out your baskets. Okay. Yep, 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 just working out. It's different machines. Different machines are always confusing. Right, okay, so. Here we go. Whatever seam allowance you go for. Down you go. And literally, just so you have a straight line. Like, it's really easy. Honestly, this could not be easier. So yourself a straight line, down you go. And then, if you wanna do forwards and backs, then you can, but it's not the end of the world. There we go. With it so far, super easy. Okay, now, you'll cut yourself a strip of fabric and then sew it in half, okay? Fold it, wrong sides, sew it in half. Now, what I would say to you then is get your turny turny tool, all right? So sew along one end, and this is if you've got a turning tool, then just sew shut one end. It just makes life easier. Use your turny turny tool, through it goes. Dee, 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 dee. And out it comes the other side. Then you can just press that. I then. So what that turny turny tool does is turn your bag handles, turn anything like this that quite frankly would just take you longer to do otherwise. And then I would just press that. Now, if you want it reinforced and nice and flat, then this is what I would say to do is just top stitch over it. Um, so just go down the side, really easy. Oh. Is that gonna, hang on, that's gonna, it's gonna eat it. Don't eat it, machine. There we go. Oh, it's got the, this machine has got different, different um, things on it. There we go, come on. Yay, there we go. So just do a very quick top stitch, just down one side. It just flattens it out. There we go. Oh, running low on what now, Producer Paul? Which one are we running low on? On the stags? Okay, that was five stags left, but you can buy the fabric by the half metre. Yeah? Yes, that's still the case? Okay. Now, pellets, are we running low on pellets? The pure white ones, which are brand new, which are great for this. Gosh, over half the stock gone. Please make those. Uh, grab those. Don't miss out on those. So these are the white ones. These are the new ones. They're a different shape to the other ones, um, which just means that they've got, they've got more volume. Okay. They're a little bit lighter as well in weight, but they're bigger in volume. And just the way... Oh, we were learning about this the other day. Just the way that they move across each other um, is... There you go. The, they're really easy to use, but they're perfect for this project. But you have to check out six ninety five for your pure white poly pellets. Whoa! How many of you have got you in the basket? Multi buying too. We've got Margaret. We've got Janet. She's going for a few. Sylvia's going for a few. Liesel's going for a few. Um, Loreline, nice name. Uh, oh, sorry, no, Lorraine. Um, also a nice name. Carol, Pauline, Carol, another Carol, another Joe, Judith, Maureen, Hannah. Shirley, Margaret, Dora. Margaret's really going for it. She's got three in there. Um, Eileen, Lou, Susan, Naleen, Sadie, Karen, Valerie, Joy, Pauline, Susan and David, Vera and Alice. Gosh. Whoa. Now the grey ones. Hang on, I need a quick slurp of tea after that. Uh, very low in stock. 
Grab your basket. This is your grey. Sorry, I'm getting a cold, sore throat. Um, here we go. These are your grey ones. Again, these ones are great for your door stopper. They're a little heavier. They're a kilo there. If you do want to use these for your tablet stand, what I would say is just pop a little bit of um, wadding or stuffing or something in there as well. 6.95 K-A-P-I-45 for those. 13 of those left. That's it. Wow. Okay, so as we were, as we were, you have sewn, hang on, you've sewn down each side, okay? Sewn down each side. Easy, easy, easy. Now, you want to go opposites, okay? Seam to seam. Um, if you want to press them like you would and do them so that they then slot, then you can. But just press them there. Pop a quick, oh, pin. If you had any pins, oh, here they are. Then just pop a quick pin in there. Now, stars very, very popular. Of course, if you want to match up your seams and make sure they're all matching, then you can do that. This is the bit, this is the only, this is the only even remotely, I'm not even going to say tricky, it's not even tricky. I would just trim your threads on there and then have, oh, chess is sold out. Well done, let's get that off. Well done if you managed to grab that. Stars is the most popular at the moment. There you go. Now, stags are going to sell out very, very quickly. So let me finish this off. Okay. So you pop your handle, whether you've reinforced it or not, pop your handle like that and pop it in there towards the end. Okay. You want to butt that right up to the end there. That's it. Just butt it up to the end and just pin that in place. So that is, so you've got the long handle that you've got that all the way down into there and just pin it. I've got the world's fattest pin there. There we go. Just pin that in place. And so you've got seams together. seams together there and then you've got your handle right up that edge there and what that's going to do is bring that handle up to that edge so that you've then got it right up to that edge so that you can do that all right okay so when I then start to sew this what I want to do is start about there so before before my middle join but I've got to just leave enough that I can actually get my handle and everything back through when I bag it out okay so I'm going to start there I'll do a little forwards and back stitch there but you do need to check out your baskets check out your loop turners as well they're very popular this hour as well everything's very popular hooray now, if the stars, if everybody checks out the stars, there are six left. I told you this was an easy make, didn't I? Now, no pressure, but, you know, if you want it, you've got to grab it. Um, so now I've got... Oh, gosh, I might have gone a little bit too, too close there. I might have to unpick a couple of stitches there. Uh, leave yourself enough space to turn through. Tell you what, I'll just whiz up another quick one here. Let me show you in this one because that one's about to, sew, to, to sell out. So straight down the edges there and then pop your handle in, okay? Uh, actually, no, I can just pick off. But this is the thing, isn't it? Just make sure when you do it that you don't go too close. So there's me giving you that warning and then I go and do exactly what I've just told you not to do. That's the joy of live television, isn't it? Uh, that's the absolute joy. So just... So, uh, yeah, now have a look at this fray check because you might want to pop that in your basket as well. Very, very popular. Um, we did bring in our under £10 hour producer, Paul. You are entirely right. And the reason that we did is because it's one of those things that to, to just have. So in the, um, 
whilst moving house, what's happened with one of my patchwork quilts is that it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's not, it's struggled a little bit. And, uh, and I've had a little patchwork that's just frayed a little bit, but I'm just gonna use a bit of that fray check and then just turn it under and hand stitch it in. Now let's have a look at each of those options. So you can get the stags, but you're gonna have to be quick on the stags. Okay, that, and you get the stars. You can also get nautical. I do love the nautical. So you're gonna get half a meter of your nautical, which is kind of like a faux patchwork. I think this works beautifully for little boys' bedrooms. The other thing to say, if you aren't gonna wash it, um, if you think it's gonna be safe, maybe you're using it as a door stopper on carpet, then maybe um, what I sometimes do is add in a little bit of lavender and then it, it just helps to make the room slightly more fragrant. Sticking with that nautical theme, maybe you're gonna use this in the bathroom. Maybe you've got a bathroom door that just keeps shutting and then, you know, when it's steamy and you just wanna let that steam out, use your door stopper. Uh, right, when you've actually made a hole, live TV uh, that is big enough to actually fit your hand in and then turn everything through then do exactly that just turn it through it is as easy as that give a little shake get your turny tool this is the other joy of your turny tool that it can help just um, snip out your corners if you want really sharp corners then you can you can trim them I don't really worry mm -mm -mm. Where's my other corner? There with my handle in. Okay. If you've got any little spare threads, snip them. Now, there you go. That is basically it. But what you're gonna need to do is fill it. Um, and then you're gonna slip stitch that. And it is that easy. You can make numerous of these in an hour. And actually, the other thing, once you get going with these, you're going to make so many of them. You've got that round there, if you want to do that. Um, shall I fill it? No, 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 no filling. Okay, I won't. But I will just show you. So here, on your edges here, and this is why it's great to do just a zigzag or a, an overlock stitch or a fray check or whatever. Just turn it in. You can press it if you want, but turn it in pin it and slip stitch it, ladder stitch, whatever you want to call it. So I just turn those in, pop a little pin in, try and make them even. If you want to press it, then you can. If you're at all worried about um, the pattern coming off, then just use a press cloth. And then all you do is just slip stitch along there. And you won't actually, you really won't see it. And that's mine down there. And you really can't see it down there. That's the joy of your slip stitch. We've got a tutorial for that, haven't we? Ladder stitch online, if you're unsure of how to do that. But there it is. You see, ready to pop your tablet on. Yay! So, you can do that. Easy. I told you it was easy, didn't I? Now, let's go through all of the different tools for the job. So... I want to show you, I know that it's sold out, but I will just cut the, is it all right to cut the chest, the chest pit? Oh, okay. Um, this is a great ruler to use because, let me show you. When you grab your fabric, you're gonna cut 10 inches across, okay? So, if I just get this and show you this here, what I would say is when you get your half a metre, there you go. Maybe you're making multiples, maybe you're making two, for example, or whatever. Just fold your fabric. I mean, you could even, actually, here we go. Fold it in half like that. Then trim off. Is it all right to trim this one, Producer Paul? No, can't, okay. But you could just trim along there and then spin it around. And then you can use your ruler 
to then measure your 10 inches. So say I'll take it from that edge there. So you've cut yourself a nice straight edge and then you're like, right, okay. So I want to go 10 inches along. So there you go. There's your 10 inch mark there. Line that all up, line that along the edge of your fabric and then you can cut, but you've got, you can measure that 10 inches and then you can also make sure um, when you, when you fold your fabric that you've got your, your 20, your 20 inches as you do it. So that's, that's what I would say to you. That's the best way of doing it because that's, how long's that? There you go, that is about 10 inches. So it's just, it, it should be around or about, but you're gonna want to neaten and that's where that is great. So if you do have one of those, great. If you want to grab it, it's 23.95. These rulers are not just for quilting. They are for just everyday cutting of fabric, making, you know, it's the right tools for the job, isn't it? Every single time. Uh, now, um, the ruler is one of my favorites and I, I always, 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 go on about creative grids because I do love them very, very much. So when you use it, you've got white numbers and you've got black numbers. Now for me then, I just needed to line it up with my 10 inch mark. That is in white. Now say I was trimming down a block for my quilting and I wanted a finished 10 inch, I would spin it around because if I want a finished 10 inch, then I want to cut it at 10 and a half, which gives me my quarter inch seam. So these black numbers up here give me my seam allowance added in. So all of the black ones are your inch plus a half and all of your white ones, white measurements are there. Now, what you'll notice is this non-slip grip. Now on the half an inch, the inch plus a half, that is there half an inch with your non-slip grip so instantly it gives you uh, that as a, as a visual reference if I spin it around so that you see just the normal inch then you've got a quarter inch and so that's a, just another they're just creative grids just understand the measurements that quilters want to use so they've done that for you and that's a great piece of kit 23.95 uh, now what else do we want the toy filling, oh yeah. So, I want to show you the toy filling because you can use the door stopper uh, filling. You can use it either for the tablet rest or if you want it, uh, because it's a heavier, a heavier filling, you can use it for um, door stoppers. Now, if you're gonna do a door stopper out of it, but you, you know, I quite like them just like that. But if you want it plumped up, or maybe you're using these because these also work for weighting down toys. You know toys that you want to sit on the side. Maybe they've got long dangly legs and you want them to actually be able to sit up. You can use them to weight things down, um, which is excellent. But then top up with your stuffing if you wish. You know, if, so if you wanted that as like a, a full floofed sort of triangle for under three pounds, it's the same as your P and P, two ninety five. Our PMP is done per day, by the way, per day. So 2.95. There it is. Now this hour is all about the tablet. Should we have a little um, catch up? Let's go through. Okay. Now the stags. Here are the stags, and you get the instructions, and you get your thread. So you get all of that. Yeah. Oh, do you know what I could just do, producer Paul? And that is, check exactly how many of these you get out. So this is your half a metre. This is your 10 inch square. You have to check out your basket. So one, oh gosh, there are two left if everybody checks out. Right, so one, two, three, four, and then enough for your handles. If you did your handles in a contrasting thread, then you could, in a contrasting colour, then you can get five, five of these out of half a metre of this fabric. That's good. That's good. Um, also, um, if you've got a layer cake, you know the ten, the ten inch squares. If you've got those, perfect for this. Absolutely perfect. Uh, and of course, you can size up and size down. It's entirely up to you. Now. Uh, the stars, let's have a look at the stars. 
Now that's the one that's in the actual instructions. There you go, you can see that. Let's see how many of these we have left. Do you know, it is super simple. If everybody checks out, there are three left. So 995 XMGC77. Remember with this particular fabric, if you use, if you went, maybe if you did a contrasting color, then you can get five. If you want them with the same handle, then you can get four out of this fabric. That's great. That's really good. That's a lot of gifting, isn't it? Or maybe what I did with the rest of my fabric um, was actually make, uh, you know, one of the plastic bag holders. You've got enough fabric to do one of those as well if you want. So I've got a door stopper and a plastic bag holder. Brilliant. Nautical I've made. Here we go. This is the nautical. It's a fab fabric, this one, because here it is. I've done that one as a door stopper. Just because, and that's only down to the fin. Made in exactly the same way. But it's coming in your kit form. So 9.95, half a meter of the fabric, plus your thread, plus your instructions. What you fill it with will determine what you use it for. Okay, but look how much you're getting there. Actually, I'd really quite like, can you get this by the half meter, producer Paul, or is this only, only because I would really quite like to make um, a wash, uh, like a laundry bag out of it as well for the bathroom. It'd be really quite nice. And those um, squares go in all different directions. Yeah. I really like that one. Cool. We've got that and your thread and your instructions. Uh, and then we've got ba -ba -da -ba, the anchors, which of course is part of the same range as the nautical one. So maybe if you are after getting two, then you could do one side, one color, one side, the other. Yeah. Now, of course, if you wanted to use this, if you wanted to do two different colors, then all you'd need to do is cut yourself two 10 inch squares. So for example, I could have my 10 inch square out of that one and then I could then cut myself a 10 inch square out of that one. And then all I would have to do is just cut, uh, just sew three sides. And then, shall I, oh, I can't do that, can I? I can't use this fabric. Now, if you want to eau de coat, then you can. So this is the thing, we suddenly thought, well, gosh, if you're gonna get the heavier beads, uh, then you can use it for a door stopper. But if it's in anywhere that's gonna get wet, use your eau de coat. And here it is. So this is your Odico. It's a, oh, it's magic in a pot. This I do love this. The way that this works is, it will waterproof your fabric. So get it out, brush it on, get a credit card or a store card, one that you you know maybe I'm going to use again. And when you've got your fabric, now two ways of doing it, two schools of thought. Um, I would probably eau de coat slightly more fabric than I needed because you've got to really work into those fibres with the when you're putting it on. Some fabrics will just shift a little bit, so then you'd cut it down to the size that you want. So you're cutting your true size. Uh, but for example, if I wanted to do this, then I would just work the eau de coat in one way so that it covers one lot of threads, then you work it through that way. So you're covering your warp and your weft threads with the eau coat so that it's gonna be watertight. That's what you're after. So warp and weft and that's all. Paint it on with a paintbrush, splodge in that way, splodge in that way, any excess, put it back in the pot. Allow to dry, it takes about an hour to dry, maybe. Um, and then you just sew it like any other fabric. And that's the beauty of it. You don't have to put a special foot on like sometimes you would for, for, um, for an oil cloth or anything like that. Really fab. That's all you need to do. I've got some messages. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Michael says, thanks for the tutorial, Natasha. They're a great idea for some Christmas Prezi extras. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, it is so easy, so easy. And yet a great, little, a great little gift at the end. And I use mine all the time. Hannah in West Sussex says, um, 
Happy beautiful day, Natasha. Well, happy beautiful day to you too. Would like to give a shout out to Derek and customer service who was really helpful, says Hannah. Do you know what? Our customer services are fab. Derek, good on you. I don't know what you did. Probably just your job in the course of duty, but hey, well done. Um, Pauline, oh, gosh, lots of messages. Thank you. Says, hi, Natasha. Away in the motorhome. Nice. Uh, but still watching your show it was lovely to meet you at Sewing Be Live. Regards, Pauline. Ah, yes, Pauline. I yes, we discussed your motorhome. Fabulous. I hope you're having a lovely time. Now, text to win. Yeah, who wouldn't love another little extra sewing machine? Yeah, here we go. Elna 240EX sewing machine. You just text to win. That's it. Text sew to 66777, T's and C's all online, over 18's only please. Uh, you asked for some scissors. Oh, I asked for some scissors. Yes, I did. Um, which ones would you like to look at? These ones, these ones, or, oh, these ones, these ones, no. Yeah, you said you could, I couldn't have them in stock. They weren't in stock, producer Paul. Oh, well, I don't have them. Let's have a look at the rotary cutter. I did ask for the rotary cutter. Uh, okay, now, I was gonna use this, but it turns out that actually these kits are not allowed to cut into. The reason I chose this one is because it's my favorite. Can I use it on the stags? Oh, gradually producer Paul says I can use it on the stags. Yay! Okay, or can I use it on the anchor? Actually, no, do you know what? I'll use it on this because then I can just show you how to do the three sides. So, if you had two different prints that you wanted to use, so say I want to do half anchors, half this, um, I would get out my fabulous rotary cutter. Now, this has, uh, I know it looks weird, okay, get over the fact it looks weird because it's fab. Fist scars, so we know it's going to cut great. Now, you cannot move this, uh, no, you cannot move the blade and it has several different positions if that is open. Okay, so it's got that, sa uh, that safety feature in there. If you want to use it just as a normal rotary cutter, then there, just put it like that. Rumpf. Job done. Okay, normal rotary cutter. If you want to go off at an angle, so this is for left and right handed people. So say I want to, you know, I want to cut, you know how Lucy sometimes would cut like that, but I want to just make it easier, then I can then do that at an angle. Or maybe I want to cut this way, then I can swing it round. And if you're left-handed, there you go. You've got that option to be left-handed. But my favorite mode of all, for me, it's about time. It's about how much can I cut safely. So I'll always use my creative grids because I want to be safe. I don't want anything moving around, but also effectively. And this is what they call the power mode on this. And I think I've cut through at least 14 layers of fabric, 14 layers of fabric in one go with this. And we had all sorts of different thicknesses of fabric. Um, so the way that this works is that you can see, because of how it is and how you hold it, all of my weight that I'm exerting is going over there. If I have it like that, then it's dissipated, like the power is going down there. But as soon as I put all of my power over the top, 14 layers of fabric I went through in one go live on air. Brilliant. Um, so if you suffer with wrist fatigue and things like that, and you just want an easier way to cut, this is it. So with my project, if, 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 um, I want to do two contrasting fabrics. So yesterday I made, I had um, a couple of layer cakes left over from a, a K facet layer cake. Easy, easy, easy. So I just want to cut that straight up there. How easy is that? Nice, done. Cover my blade up again. And all you would do just means an extra side. So right sides together. Or maybe you've got a directional print and you want it all to be going in the same direction. And then you would just sew down there, along there, along there. You can do that in one fell switch. Shall I just do that? Shall I just sew that? May just as well as we're here. Uh, and it just means it's super easy. So 
forward and back when you start and off you go. So then when you get to the corner, needle down. Oh, I'm just going to go back. I don't want to, no, 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 back, backwards, backwards, backwards. There. Needle down, spin around, and then just whiz down. You can make so many of these. Oh, do you know what my other top tip is? When you, um, when you fill these, grab yourself a funnel or something out of your kitchen, stick the funnel in, or you can even just funnel a piece of paper, but that's, that's what I found to be the easiest way of doing it, by far. But I mean, how quick and easy. Now, if you're after the kit, this is the nautical. Half of that is gone. So you're getting half a meter of the fabric. And we worked out, what did we work out in the end? Four, if you wanted to have matching handles. Yeah. Easy peasy. Um, look at that, under 10 pounds. So you get your thread, you get your instructions, you get half a meter of fabric. So four, that's two pound 50 plus your stuffing. Less than two pound 50 plus your stuffing, whatever you choose to stuff it with. Okay, so I've just snipped off the corners there. And this is, this is the only bit you've got to remember is just to go and just push your, just push your seams in different directions like you would on a quilt just to butt them up and then just pin. Where do my pins go? Oh, they're right in front of me. Right in front of your nose, Natasha. Pin that and then get your handle. Where is my handle? There it is. I mean, you will have pressed it and made it look fabulous, maybe top stitched it, but again, if you don't want to go through that and you've used, I just cut the, I just do the edges just so that I can use my prim turner because I love my prim turner. Then all you need to do, do that in half. Oh, now the white pellets are sold out. Well done if you got those. So we've still got the gray. These are perfect if you're making these as um, door stoppers. So I had one. So if you want these for door stoppers, then grab these ones. You can use these. They don't have as much volume as the white ones which are sold out. We have four left if everybody checks out their basket. Gosh, it's been a super busy hour. But once you've got the instructions, of course, you know, you can just, you can just make it. Just make it in as many different fabrics as you like. We've made these and I say we, I've made these in so many different fabrics. Another message. I've still got Pauline's up there. Nope, Sue's hasn't come through yet. I will possibly just sew this until it does. Uh, okay. When you... Nah. Just be aware that on some of these, you're obviously going to be working on the bias, so it can just move a bit. But it's a 3D item, so I don't think it really matters. And again, don't do as I did earlier. Make sure that you start and you've left enough space to get your hand and the handle through. Just to reiterate that. I may as well finish this one off. What does Sue say, Producer Paul? It didn't come up. Oh, Sue said, love it, love it, love it. How much, what, sorry? How much filling did I use? Okay, so if you got the white bag, I used all of it. Um, if you get the gray one, then if you want to use that for your tablet cover, then pop a little bit of stuffing as well. It's heavier but it's not quite as much volume uh, just because it's, that's just the way they're made. They're, you know, they're more for your, your door stoppery type things. But yeah, no, I just, I just shoved it all in. Job done. Um, you can also use a uh, bean bag filling as well, but just be aware that's not as easy to wash if you need to wash it. And um, I've fallen foul of that, you know, by not using those. Now, four options left. Let's take a look. So we've got the stags. Have we still got the stags? I thought that they would have gone by now. Gosh, there you go. Okay, so we're going to just check out how many of those we've got. All under £10. Everything here today on the show, uh, kit-wise, under £10, which is fabulous. It's lovely to have now like that. Three left of the stag. Okay, yeah, no, they're going to go, aren't they? Uh, the stars... And this was what I think this was the very first one that I made actually. I saw Jess Entwistle made 
a plastic carrier bag holder out of this stars and I was like oh yeah that would work if everybody checks out that has then gone and then we've got the nautical so again half a meter and your thread and the instructions that's great value isn't it absolutely great value four left of those gosh super 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 short on stock uh the anchors that would be great to educate quite right producer paul really would really would oh i'm so pleased that you've loved these this hour that's excellent news good 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 excellent uh do you want to see how much time we've got shall i show you the slip stitch there you go now instructions super clear and it is that easy that you it's just one page okay now this was just bex and i sat in the office and went through how do we do this how do i make it so i explained how i made it she made notes and then she came up with the full instructions for you so then you've got it are you um building up quite a little stash of these yeah yeah me too let me show you how to slip stitch if i've got a, if i've got a needle i don't have a needle that's too big let's have a look at the print turner then instead now print turners i love them three sizes in here so everything from your ruler loops all the way up to your bag handles things like that it just makes life easier she says getting them completely stuck in there so three different sizes here you go there's your big one medium and your little one so that's for your idly diddly diddly tiddly tiddly sort of spaghetti straps and things like that if you're dressmaking things that you might think how on earth would i ever turn that through and that would take an awful lot of time so uh, for example, all you would need to do is get the plastic part. It comes in two parts. You get the plastic part and then you're going to get the wooden part. When you turn anything, just make sure that you've sewn one end shut. You can always cut it open, unpick it open or just doesn't matter. Stuff it and then just pop your turner in. Now, done. You've then got the point in to push out those corners. It's already in there doing that job. Job done. You want to see it again? Pop your tube in. Now, I mean, I, I did. When I first demoed this, I did a full length of fabric. So it was much, much longer. And again, still really easy. It just glides through. The plastic means that it just glides over the top of it. Absolutely easy as anything. And that is why we love the prim turning tool. So yes, you can, of course you can sit there and turn stuff. Of course you can do that, that thread's gonna annoy me. But why would you? Why would you when you've got a prim turner? Anybody, in fact, we always have messages because this was, um, this was the lifesaver for me. If you make things like the, your Tilda toys, they've got those long, thin legs, haven't they? Arms, legs, and tails, if you're making the monkey, for example. This middle one is your best friend for that for all of those legs. So you're gonna get all three for 7.95. So rouleau loops, tilde legs, bag handles is how I like to think of them. Other options are available. Um, do you know what? Others, just, just the, it's the right tool for the job, isn't it? These are my favorite, these are by far my favorites. Absolutely by far my favorites. Now, this is what you're getting. Here's the prim turner. These are the three different sizes. And it even gives you a guide on the back as to when to use what size, which is great. Now, we are looking at one postage and packing per day. Now, the way that that works is the PMP gets applied at midnight. So you can check out your basket. So maybe you've had to hurriedly check out because you didn't want to miss out on anything today. That's absolutely fine. Just check out your basket. And, um, and then you might find something later that you absolutely need to have. That's fine. Check out your basket again. Other companies will charge you a PMP every time you check out your baskets. Not here. That was really important to us. So what we've done is made sure that your PMP is done per day. So everything gets collated. And then at midnight, you get charged for everything you've bought throughout the day. And one PMP is added at 2 95 
that's it. So you could buy 10 sewing machines, we'd only charge you 2 95 that's cracking well, value. Now, fray check. Grab your fray check. Here we go. Uh, super useful, especially if you're quilting. Uh, Lucy's just come in. Lucy, there is a time, isn't there, when sometimes we sew a little bit too close to the edge and there is a worry of fraying and that seam coming undone. Nah, -uh -uh, not anymore. £5.45 for your prim fray check. Done. Nautical kids. Here it is. So that's my one that I made. How quick and easy is that? Yeah. So 9.95 TIGC 99. Yay! And anchors. I haven't made anything out of the anchors. What I would say with this fabric, make sure you use a fray check or pinking shears or just zigzag your edges. It's just because it's a it's a um a larger thread that's going through, which gives it that great linen look. And it is a durable fabric, but it does just have a little tendency to fray. But that's easily stopped. There you go, 995. All the pellets have gone. Right, let's get rid of all the pellets. Now, Lucy Brennan is up after the break. Hey, Lucy. And she's going to be doing an intermediate quilting block for you out of a book. Have we seen that book before? I haven't seen it. No, it's brand new. So stay with us for lots of Lucy action after the break. So grab yourself a cup of tea and I will see you in just a few minutes. But well done everyone that managed to get their hands on these and on the pellets. See you in a minute. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our sewing quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. The Sewing Quarter website is simple and easy to use. You can view a live broadcast of the show on our homepage. Get instant access to our online shop, which has a wide range of wonderful products for you to choose from. You can also enjoy a selection of projects and guides, which we have on offer to help you enhance your skills and gain valuable tips. Watch the live shows and you can buy the product which is currently being shown on air. You can even message the studio to ask our presenters or team any questions you might have. Below, you'll find all the products from today's show for you to look at and purchase. On the right of the screen, next to today's products, you will find our simple programme guide listing all upcoming shows. So, join us today at sewingquarter.com. Don't forget, shopping with us is easy and simple. You can just contact us at 0800 112 4433 and speak to our UK-based call centre to place an order or shop online with us at www.sewingquarter.com. When you spend £10 on your first purchase, you will receive this free sewing kit from the Sewing Quarter worth £14.99. The leaves are golden, the air is crisp, and all along the hedgerows, animals are bedding down for hibernation. Before they settle into their winter slumber, this pair of adorable hedgehogs will be paying a visit to the Sewing Quarter studio, courtesy of Joe Carter. This Tuesday, Joe will unveil this brand new soft toy design. With a handy kit and plenty of expert guidance, you can make your own hedgerow hedgehogs at home. So tune in on Tuesday the 3rd of October at 8am and find out how it's done. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78. Join us on Wednesday the 4th of October as we give new guest designer Jenny Smith a very warm welcome to our team. Jenny's sewing skills know no bounds. She's a talented quilter, dressmaker, pattern designer and teacher and her home decor is second to none. For her debut show, she will be creating a hothouse flower cushion and a beautiful sweet bouquet quilt. Join us in welcoming Jenny to the channel for two hours of expert advice and lots of fun. That's Wednesday the 4th of October at 9am and 11am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78.
welcome back. Now, I promised you a brand new book, quilting book, in fact, this hour. And here it is. So, brand new today, Quilt Traditions. $23.95. What you're getting in this book is ah, some gorgeous quilts. All traditional, but also nice little stories that go with them. In fact, it says, is it on the back? Behind every great quilt is a greater story. Look at that. They are graded in terms of difficulty. So there are easy ones. There are intermediate, there are difficult ones in here. So Lucy says that this, this is the book that Lucy said earlier. She went through and she's like, yes, I'd like to make that. I'd love to make that. So go through, have a look. They've all got great names. Bebe Alamud. Oh, yes, Bebe Alamud. Now, this one is a beginner one. So if you're just starting out, yep, tick, you can do that. So have a think about what colors you've got at home, what you want to work with. So... Oh, nice. So each of these quilts is inspired by life events that everyone can, you know, appreciate. Having a baby, yeah, big day. Twelve traditional de uh, quilts in there. Whoa, look at that club night. Woo woo. Now that's intermediate. So we've we've stepped up a little a little level there. That's amazing, isn't it? And then you'll get in here. This gives you a little bit of background or a story or tips or hints. Yeah. Now this one, this is intermediate as well. But look at that. So that's your honeymoon. Oh, I see. So yeah, literally life events. So you started off with your kiss me. I don't think these are in necessarily life event order. <laughs> Kiss me, then your honeymoon, maybe, then the baby one. Let's go with that. Um, what have we got over here? Oh, the, it's such a pretty one, that. Imagine that in Tilda. Oh, not that everything would look great in Tilda. You get your templates as well. They're all in there. Uh, little black dress. Should that go down there with the, with the kiss me one? This is great. Yeah. Little black dress. And then you get all of those. Mad housewife. <laughs> I don't have a comment for that. <laughs> no comments for that. Um, uh, <laughs> what's peppermint? What is that? Small, sweet and sassy like a peppermint. I don't know what life event that is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, what's that? Potion. Oh, gosh. Hey. They, oh, well, there you go. Um, life events. Pick your own, really. Now, to make some of these, you need fabric, of course. So we've brought you a plethora of beautiful fabrics. Now, this is for the Mr. Block. That's what we're doing. In fact, oh, Mr. I'm going to give Lucy back the book. There you go, Lucy. Now, uh, so we're making the Mr. Block. Mr. Fabric. Yes. Four metres. Hello, four metres. So out of your four metres, you're going to get your silver spot on. Yeah, metre of each of these. Now, is this the ebony again with your linear? It does look like it, but I don't know if it's just slightly lighter. I think it's slightly lighter. Oh, zinc. There we go. Zinc in your linen. Oh, fabulous purple there. And then your cream go there. So deep, deep purple. And then your latte there. Fab. So that's your mister. Then you've got Mr. Re. See what we've done there? All just mystery. But uh, I have to say, the, the ladies in the office that named these were very pleased with themselves. Mystery fabric for your Mr. Block. Uh, here we go. So you've got uh, your linear in cameo there. You've got spot on in your baby pink, cheeky pink rather. You've got down here, teal and antique white. Again, 
A metre of each. Yes, four metres. Oh, now, look at this. This is your mist E. No, it's not. Apparently it's not. Which one's this? Mischief. Mischief. See what they've done there. Here we go. So, if you would like to grab your spot, so each of these have a spot on a linear and two planes. That's how these are coming. So, mischief. So, we've got claret, glacier grey, azalea, and then steel spot on. Last one before we go over and see Lucy. Lucy, I'm coming for you. This is misty. Yeah, oh, I can see that, misty. You've got deep purple there, you've got your mauve spot on, this one, that one is your ebony uh, linear, and then you've got your vanilla. There we go, 32.45. But that's for four metres of fabric. Yes, yes, yes. Lucy, what are you doing? Hello, I'm just Hello. doing some trimming. Ooh, trim away. Jumping ahead. Uh, now, the mister one was on page 59. Uh, the mister. This is what we're making. Not all of it. Not all of it. No, just so that, you know, just be prepared. Just a block. <laughs> yeah, just a block. But you have a little while. Yeah. We're only on for four hours live each day. <laughs> it's only an hour. Calm down. Uh, so that's the mister block. The, it's one of those ones, isn't it, that whatever colours you choose to do this in, it's going to play differently. Yes, absolutely. And you can really play about with fabric placement in this and get different, um, you know, different designs and different looks so from it. We have a look on this page here. This is the next page in. Colour coordinated, obviously. Yeah. So when you pick which fabrics you want, do you then label them or just know? Um, I tend to just know, and it might be that I have different, you know, not A isn't all one colour, you know. Oh, okay. You might want to play around with it. She's done it very um, scrappily, you know, used lots of different fabrics and different colours um, to get the effect. So it's up to you, really. You are, you're going to get different looks as to how you So yours. she's gone A, B, C, D. So you've got four yes. different fabrics. And in each of our bundles, you've got four different fabrics. So you can follow this to the letter and sometimes I like to photocopy those and then just yes, colour them in. You can colour them in, yeah. I mean, I think what's nice in the quilt is that she's, you, you know, the darks aren't all one fabric, they're, they're different ones. So in most of them, you've got two you could use as dark and mix them up and two you could use as light. Does she go into sort of which ones to use for dark, which ones to use for light? Um, no, not. Not particularly. I think it's just up to you. It's just taste what you want to do. But if you if you don't put the lights where she's put the lights, you're going to end up with a very different looking block. Which might so be what you, you want. Just, it might be what you want. But you you can you know you'll get different shapes with this. This one sort of you know has this the point. It's like a pointed pinwheel. Yeah. Sort of a, yeah. Um, a shape which I think is really nice, but. If you were to put a dark fabric there, you're going to lose that point, obviously. Yeah. You know, so I'm with you. It just, it just, it's up to you. you it's whatever you play see, about with it. isn't it? It is whatever you see. But I do the. I think the quilts in this are beautiful. It says quilt traditions, and and a, a lot of them are, are sort of themed traditionally, or she gives you information about in the way that it's traditional. It's not necessarily that they're all traditional box, although a lot of them um, mm. are. Um, but I think, you know, if, if you were to use, you know, more, some of the brighter fabrics, it's going to have a completely different look of when it's course, finished. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, imagine, say that we had on first hour Tilda fabrics. Mm -hmm. Imagine that, but in that Tilda pastel wash. Yes. That shabby yeah, chic look. Very pretty. Going to give a very different feel from those browns and the blues. Yeah. And know. this one is meant to be like a wedding quilt. So she, she gives you a different theme So you might know wedding colours yeah. and you might be able to pick out and do and yeah. do those. So yeah, I mean, what does it say here, for example? It says, um, to all those who have served, uh, protected, cherished or made a promise. There you go. Oh, nice. So it's the oath quilt. So there's like yeah. a meet, you know, if you give it a name and you can write the names of the quilts on your quilt labels. Yes, of you course. should do, really. You always do that. Um, and then that, you know, that what a really nice gift to give somebody. So she says, here the oath is made up of 63 blocks and a wide snowy white border on just the sides perfect for a pliqueing service wedding or anniversary dates i used a combination of soft buttery neutrals and crisp florals for the lights to dress up the traditional red white and blue in this quilt 
And you can see, I mean, you th you almost think that looks printed, don't you? But that's actually on the quilt. She the dates, oh, she has actually the dates on the uh, appliqued on gosh. the edge of the quilt. Yeah, on our we, my mum had made for us when when Stephen and I got married a, a beautiful quilt mm. in all the colours that I love, and in one just one of the blocks because it was quite a big block quilt. Mm. In one of the blocks, it just had our initials and the date yeah, just embroidered lovely. on. So we'll always always that, my have sister, that. My cousin in America and I did a double sided quilt for my sister when she got married. Oh wow! And she's a long arm quilter, so she long armed the date. <gasps> she quilted the date in, and their names into the quilt. Oh my. Yeah, that's amazing. That's clever. Oh, very that's clever. very clever. And then there's no excuse for them to ever, ever forget, forget their, their anniversary. anniversary. No. <laughs> I bought my husband cufflinks with the oh, date didn't I? in Roman numerals, so it wasn't <laughs> quite so obvious. But so he always had a reference. Yeah. Yeah. It's me that forgets. Uh, right. What are we doing? Okay. So this. Um, that one's just jumped. Sorry. Yeah. There. No, no that's I've, okay. I've... Don't worry. <coughs> so this block is made up of simple shapes so it's mostly triangles and a few squares added in for fun good measure um and it's easy and not easy <laughs> um it's intermediate it's, it's intermediate that's, that's what it there is. you go it's intermediate. It's, you know cutting the shapes and everything's really quite straightforward um but the pe if the piecing isn't completely accurate and you lose your points, the effect of the block is lost. Right. Okay. So it's one where it's really crucial that you get all the elements put together, that your, that your seam allowances are correct, and um, to get those nice, sharp points. So these um, half triangle rectangle shapes can be tricky and what I've done in order to get it so I'm not losing any of my points I'm making them bigger and then cutting them down so that can so be that's really a little, a little trick that you've got just yes. because you know as an experienced quilt it's quite nice to pass on these little hints and tips because there's nothing more frustrating is there than going oh no, and you don't want to go, go to all the work cutting things out and then find you joining it together and it's not working quite as you expected. So, so I how would, much bigger would you go? Well, I'm doing a slightly different method um, to be able to cut them down. So the, you can work on a ratio with um, rectangles but, and I've gone even bigger to, to get it to the size that I want it for this because the finished size of the block you want is two and a half by four and a half inches. Right. Um, so I've cut these at seven and a half by three and a half. Okay. So quite a bit bigger. So I am trimming it back. But for me, it's worth it to have those perfect points versus losing a little bit of... You are a, a perfectionist, of, Yeah, aren't you? So, losing a little bit of fabric. So. Because it's fair to say in quilting, there are some of those shapes that just are trickier to do. Yes, You know, So are. if there is a little cheats method or, you know, something like that, it's great that you can pass that on. Yeah. Um, this, for me, is interesting because normally I would expect to see block square blocks but this isn't this is interspersed you've got a square block square block square block square block and then it's kind of got a cross going yeah through so it, it's almost it? like these right i still need to trim it's this one but like it's sashing. almost like the, the rectangles are sashing exactly yeah. so you're building it up that way but that's why because each time you sew a little component together you're making it smaller and smaller mm. and smaller and that's where the accuracy is really important and especially in a block like this where you've got a lot of points there's nowhere to hide with it, really. Hence intermediate. Hence intermediate. Because if you, if you were to do this and, you, and you're not too sure or, um, you know, you lose your points, like I said, you've gone to all that work and, and it's, the end result won't, won't be as nice. So. so this is one, if you are after a challenge or, you know, you've just been quilting a long while and, and actually you're, yeah. you are spot on with your points, Give it a good go. We can't always do beginners. It's not fair to always do beginner No, quotes. no. You know, we've got, we've got to give you the option as well because a lot of you are fantastic and we can see that yeah. some of the photos oh, yeah, that get sent in. Definitely. So my, my photo challenge for you this hour, send us a photo of your most challenging quilt that. to date. Yeah, I love Doesn't that. matter where you are on the spectrum. No. We're no, all no. in different places, but the most challenging quilt you've created to date, I would love to see. Yeah. It's your chance to just, you know, have a little. <laughs> I would yeah. love to see. What, we do. We whatever love Whatever stage you're at, do show us, please. And uh, now, the book is $23.95. Um, 
Let's have a look at the... So, some of these books are quite difficult to get hold of. Yes. You know, yeah. that's that's just... I don't want to... No, I know, sorry. I'm, I'm like, going to go here. here. <laughs> I do not want to move this beautifully placed block. It's intermediate, you know. Um, these are, there are beginner quilts in this one, but I would definitely say... I would recommend I this that for one. somebody that's done, yeah, done a, a bit more advanced, um, quit, or, you know, intermediate. Well, they are the projects. Thing. And actually, I quite looking at these, looking, sometimes when I look at a book and you look too closely, you can't see the, the effect. But if you just stand back from it a little bit, you can start to see where the patterns are coming through. And it might be that maybe the fabric colours aren't to your taste, aren't to your, your choice. I don't have much brown that I would go for, so I'd go for some different colours. Mm -hmm. But you can see the patterns and you can see absolutely why they're going to work, how they're going to work. And in your fabric colour choices, beautiful. You know, that's they call that babe alamo, traditional baby. But um, there's no reason why that can't be in more pastely baby colours. Yeah, if you want. absolutely. So 12 different projects in here, 23.95. And full instructions and, of course, your templates in there as well. Where do we get started, Lucy? Um, OK, so it, you've got all your cutting instructions um, in there. Yes. <laughs> the in, book. The, in the book. In the book, that's the word. In the book is itself in the book. most known, yes. Um, and, I mean, really, that's it's quite straightforward. You're cutting squares and then you're uh, cutting them in half to okay. make um, triangles. So there's nothing particularly complicated about um, that. It's fairly straightforward. I did skip the uh, triangle measurements that were in the book um, to, to do it my way of making it slightly bigger and trimming it down just because I like to have That's how you do it. That's but this is the thing, it. isn't it? That's how you choose to do yes. it. You can, you know, you can follow it completely in the book. Yeah. Once you get to intermediate, you'll have found your own way of doing the odd thing here and there, I'm sure. Yeah. I just like that. For me, this is this is an easier method, although it's a little, you know, just it's a little bit of faffing, but I don't mind that for the end result to be okay. um, how I want it to be. So the first thing that we're going to do is sew these um, triangles together to make our rectangle. And when you're sewing these, you need to have um, an overlap. So the pointy points um, will be hanging off the end. And so it should be about a quarter of an inch. But because we're trimming it back, yeah. you don't need to be, you know, too perfect about so that. So actually, doing this your method and your way yes. means that if you are a beginner taking that step up to the intermediate level, yeah. this is going to help you get those accurate points. Definitely. And that's the thing, isn't it? That how else are you going to learn that? These, these little shortcuts or these little methods that if you're not entirely sure but you've fallen in love with the quilt, got to yeah. make that quilt, absolute gorgeous quilt, got to make it in whatever colours you want. Then there's got to be a way. Do you want me to? Say? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, Which, either way, it doesn't matter. Okay. And you can, with things like this, if you prefer to press your seams open, you can press them open, or you can just um, press to one side. So this was um, seven and a half by three and a half, um, were the rectangles, and then I cut them on the on the diagonal, obviously from corner to corner to yeah. make my two halves. So I've sewn that together. So then I want to take this block um, down to four and a half by two and a half. So the way I'm going to do that, and you're going to have to just bear with me and trust me on this. I'm going to turn my ruler the right way around. Um, so this is currently measuring just over three and I want it to be two and a half. So I can either, you know, trim off each side or I can just sort of judge where, you know, that's going to be my two and a half mark. So I want this edge and this edge to be um, roughly the same and you don't need to worry too much about being accurate again like I said but we're just cutting roughly the same amount yeah. off each side so this is the Mr Quilt out of the Quilt Traditions book by Devon Levine great name and then you do need to be at, sorry you do need to be accurate that you're cutting it two and a half right okay with me. yeah, yeah. Uh, Lucy's using the Mr Fabric we've got Four different um, bundles for you, all with four metres of fabric. So 32.45 gets you four metres. This could be quite a big quilt. Yes. Yes. EEGC 79.32.49 for your Mr. Quilt. And then what we want to do is find the point at which, if you, I don't know how close you can get to this, but we want to find the point at which 
a quarter inch this way and a quarter inch this way, that's where the point's going to lie. Ah, OK. Are you with me? Yes. Because if we trim it back and it's running into the corner, we're going to lose that point when we sew our... when okay. we sew it to the yes. next piece. Yes. So you need to have a quarter of an inch running along the side and along the top so that when you when you sew your quarter inch seams that point is heading now you see with these rulers as well on this side here the uh, uh, um the opaque bit is your quarter yes, inch so that, that, that would that, that would possibly time. even help yeah even more i know that you want that helps with the top and then you just have to judge so it's where the two are going to overlap so it's where that line you know where that one would come down and meet that. Can you see that? Yeah. So that's my that's my quarter of an inch. So I want All it there. there to meet. Excellent. So it's a little bit different, you know, than how you might normally trim something. But that's what's going to give but you that this finish. This is how we want to learn, isn't it? This yes. is the only way to to find these things out. Or you've got to go, um, you know, to a quilting workshop or something. You've got to actually. Go out. Go out. Go out. <laughs> what, is, what is that? It's starting to get dark at night. I don't want to be going out. <laughs> I want to be at home. Nice and cosy. That's what I want to be. So then um I oh, you can see how that Yeah. That's exactly right. So then you're going to have that going into that um point there on the other side. Nice. 23.95 gets you this book. Four different options. This is brand new today. Maybe you're bored of all of your books. Maybe you've done them all and you want that next step. So you can see where I've got... Oh, I've just cut that bit wrong. <laughs> but there we've got that um, quarter of an inch yeah. hanging over there. I'll trim this one and try and get it right. Why is that wrong? Oh, no, it's not no, wrong, it's is not, it? It's, it's absolutely right. perfect. Could you use that Looking as a template? Um, yes, you could. Yeah, you could. I mean, I like doing each one just so I know. You are such a perfectionist. I know. I like I love to that know. Body. I do. But love that, the if you cut side. it at that measurement, that that measurement, that bigger measurement is right for doing it four and a half by two and a half. So seven and a half by what does it say? Three and a half is right for two and a half by four and a half. If you want, if you need a different finish size, you need to play about with the ratio. So, so you can't just add an inch on each side. It would normally it's a, like a ratio of one to two. So you add one to the smaller and two to the larger. Yeah. But the bigger you get, the more you're going to need to add. Yeah. So you just need to have a play about with the, your rectangle size. You could yeah. use some scrap fabric or something like that um, and just have a play about with that. But then you can see there if I get that on the four and a half. You can see there that that corner bit there means that that diagonal line is running through right. that quarter of perfect. an inch. Yeah. Perfect. There we go. So it is a little faffy, but it's what... You like it. It's Yeah, it's what's going to make it work. So when we sew those sides, oh, you see it's we're be not losing perfect. our points. So I'll show, I'll just sew this bit and... Just to prove. Just to prove. Just to prove a point. Just to prove the point. Just to prove that point. Uh, so the mystery fabric is... Oh, the, the pink and the green, isn't it? Shall we go and have a look? I'm going to come back to it. You, pr you press that. Okay. And uh, let me show you these. Uh, so the... B -b -b let's go start with the mister. This is the mister fabric. This is the one. So we've got, we've got a lovely mix of greys in there, but with that lovely striking purple. And then it's kind of neutral with a, with a nice hit of purple through that. Four whole metres of fabric there. Whoa, for 32 45 That's a lot of fabric. You might have a quilt in mind that you already want to do, and actually, bang, yes, those colours hit the point, absolutely. Now, this maybe, maybe this is going to be a baby quilt. Maybe this is going to be um, the Bebe à la mode quilt that they've got in the book. Then here we go. This is a beautiful, soft palette of colours here for 32 45 This is your mystery fabric. All for the Mr. Quilt, but perfect. Uh, now this one, I love greys and pinks together. I really love this. So this is your Mystique. Yeah, Mystique. There we go. Just checking I've got the names right. Mystique. 
Misty. No, that's the next one is the Misty. No, is it? Oh, Mischief, right, okay. So UTGC 11, 32.45 for your Misty fabric. You've got all those greys in there, so that's nice and... Whoops, go over there, tree. Now this is Miss... Oh, producer Paul, what's the matter? Have we got them the wrong way around? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we did say that this was the misty one last time. This one's misty. Yeah. 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 So as we were, this is the misty. Hate to say I told you so, but you know. Uh, 3245 UTGC 11. This is your Miss Chief. Mischief. It was being a bit mischievous. If ever there was one that was going to be naughty, it's this one. Yes, aptly named. 3245 YIGC11. YI. Check out those baskets. Make sure you get it. Cracking value. Uh, actually, yeah, I have said that an awful lot today. Only because everything's been so popular. So, so it's Saturday. Of course. Of course it is, Luce. It's a So It Saturday. Yes, it Out of our brand new book. Are you grabbing the book? Do you need, just need a new book? Sometimes you just need a new book. You said to me earlier, Lucy, yes. that a home has to have, for you, books yes. and a piano. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> is that strange? No. I think that's what makes a nice, you know, it's just nice. Bit My of music, a bit of reading. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Such a cultural environment. Yes. Yes. So I've sewn those two pieces together. Nice. So you can see then how that point, when we come to sew that seam there. Yes. Oh, that's going to be absolutely. Yeah, that's going to be on absolutely. Point. Perfect. Is that, is that so on, point. on point? On point. On point. So it looks yeah. wrong. And this is what it takes a little bit of getting your head round. It looks like it's wrong. But it's But when so you right. come to sew the next pieces, it's right. Do you want so me to press a, that for you? Um, yes, she can do. So there's a little, you know, there is waste. I'm not pretending that there isn't. There is some waste, but you can use that for stuffing or something else, should you so desire. So then we get on to the corner blocks. Were you laughing at me earlier when I said I always save my little bits and bobs for stuffing? No, it's either, that's a good, it's a good thing to do. I have a bear that's being filled with little, little I bits. I stuff so time dog and cat beds. The, Any off cuts off the show, yeah. take them. Feel the old oh, dog and cat useful. beds, and then they go off to the um, to the animal charities. Oh, that's nice. Because apparently you. there are only so many dog beds mm -hmm. and cat beds that we can have in our house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just become one big bed. Yeah, one big cat bed. It's like soft play in our yeah. house, <laughs> <laughs> but for animals. But for animals. <laughs> so sewing these together again is quite simple, um, but you need to be using a scant. Quarter of an inch. What does that mean? So it means? Surely a quarter of an inch is a quarter of an no, inch. It's not, not all it quarter means, of an inches are created equal. It means slightly less than quarter of an inch, so that as you fold it back, it, you're not losing more than a quarter of an inch. Okay. I didn't okay. explain that very well. Um, but if you if you use a full quarter of an inch seam when you sew these pieces together, they will end up too small. That's all you need to know, really. So basically, you've got to take into account the fold, the fabric you yes. lose from folding it. Exactly. And include that in your quarter yes. inch. And, and when you... Some patterns are like that, aren't they? They are. And some patterns, if you're doing it and, and you're getting frustrated, you think you're doing it wrong, it generally is because they've been written using a scant quarter of an inch seam. Some people use a scant quarter of an inch seam as standard. Mm -hmm. Other people use a full quarter of an inch. Um, it will generally, if, if you need a scant, it will say scant. A lot of patterns will say you need a scant um, so quarter of an inch So it is a seam. thing because it's got, it is terminology. Yes. There's a terminology yes, yes, yes. for it, so it no, is I've a thing. I've not made it up. <laughs> well, <laughs> it is a thing. It it's is a thing. A um, but I you're... make up terms all the time. Yes. So, I, yeah. you know, I've been making this block and I, there were, I did this with my quarter of an inch foot on. I didn't really think about it. Da, 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 and it's then too small to join to this section. Right. So you need to be doing this with your, with a scant quarter. So you can use your, still use your quarter of an inch foot. I'll show you now. So I'll just explain the layout of this. So 
we're sewing a triangle to the side of the square. Mm -hmm. Then we give it a press. Mm -hmm. Then we sew the next triangle on. Are you edging up those? So do those yes. sides go together? Yeah. So this will hang over by about a quarter of an inch anyway, if you cut it right. Number? It's the magic Scamter number. Scamter otherwise. But you want to work from, from this edge, and I begin sewing from the straight edge as okay. well. I'd ignore the pointed side. Um, and then put this one on, and then we can just trim that. And then we're just simply just sewing those two sections together. So it's two so halves. So that there will end up measuring quarter of an inch so that when you sew them together, you get your exact points. Yes. That is why this is an intermediate one. And if you don't, and if you sew that with a full quarter of an inch seam, you won't have a quarter of an inch there. So you're going to end up with an e a smaller seam. So you think by using a full quarter of an inch seam, that's better. It's going to make your quilt stronger. But then when you come to sew the next bit, you're losing even less yes. than a scant quarter okay. of an inch. So it all... I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. I hear you. Just have to trust me. So oh, I'll sew, sew this bit to the, <laughs> to the square. She's got an honest face. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> so we trust you, Luce. On, in fact, can I just take this off and show? Yeah. So on your... I mean, all the, of the feet are different, you know. Yes. I, so I can't say what will be a scant quarter of an inch oh, on I your the foot over by the way foot the that I moved it back okay, um, <laughs> so thanks <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for so on this wrong. foot you might be able to show it better than me can you see there's a line there yeah I use this edge of that metal bit okay. as my scant okay okay um <laughs> right okay let's see how close we can get so you have when you are quilting, it's going to go along there, okay? Because it's got, it's got like a little, um, it's got a little guide there that your fabric butts up along, along there, okay? When you are doing scant, you can see, can you see, mm -mm, can you see that line there? You want to go just over, just to that side of it. So you're kind of midway between that bit and whoop, slippery little <laughs> sucker. <Yeah. laughs> so and I, that bit. So I just, midway. With my eye, I carry that line down and that becomes my scant quarter of an inch. You probably can get by just moving your fabric slightly to the left of your of the guide, you know, but you want to maintain you want to try and keep okay. that the same so for me I'm it's gonna that line say something visually. controversial why don't you just yes. move your needle over a little bit you can if you if you have the ability to do that but I sort of think then I'll probably forget to move my needle back when I want the and then full, everything's you know scant. and then everything yeah okay. and so it, it for uh -oh. me it's easier to just move my fabric slightly to the left the other thing you can do is use a bit of washi tape on your machine oh I like a bit to, of washi tape to, yeah yep. to indicate where your scant quarter of an inch you should test your scant quarter of an inch so you, sh you give it a go and then you fold it back. So say you've got two squares that are two inches and yeah. you sew them together. Yeah. And then you want it to end up at one and a half. So if you've measured, you know, if you're, sorry, three and a half, because you've got two. So if you're measuring, you can judge it by the measurements. Once you've folded it back and pressed it, what is that oh, piece okay. measuring? Right. Are you with me? Yes. And so you should lose a half an inch. Okay. Um, and just half an inch, no more. Yes, just half an inch. Because if it's more, then your seam's too big. Okay. So it is... It is. It's taking that it's step technical. up. It is te yes. getting technical. Uh, talking of technical, we've got pictures. Let's have a look. Yay. So, oh, that's Theo. That's four-year-old Theo, fan of the show. That is his... What? His first solo project. Theo. Fabulous work. What a clever boy. Isn't that brilliant? Uh, bottom right is Lynn. Ooh, ooh, is that English paper pieced? Yes. That is that gorgeous. Be. Okay, then who have we got top left? Who's that? Top left is Shirley. Well, Shirley's quilt, not actually Shirley. It's beautiful, Isn't Shirley. Isn't it gorgeous? And then bottom left. Wendy, is that off the front of one of our books? Tula meets Tilda. Nice. Oh, lovely. So Very she's nice. Tilda fabric with the Tula sampler book, mm. isn't it? The 100 block one. 
gorgeous. Nice. And that, oh, well I mean, that done. English paper piece quilt is that's real commitment. That right is, there, isn't it? Isn't it? Because that's a long term project. That look, looks gorgeous. God. It looks quite like a crochet blanket, doesn't it? The way with the collars and everything. Very Ooh, pretty. But then you get up close. Oh, we've got a competition as well. Don't forget the competition. It's text to win. All you need to do is text so to 66777. One entry per person. You still may be charged, even if you do multiple times, although only one entry will go in. T's and C's on the website. But it's all about the new website. No, website, new book today. <laughs> I'm making it up. Uh, <laughs> we don't have a website. Well, we do have a website, we don't have a new one. <laughs> Lucy, help, say oh, something. Dear. Okay, <laughs> I've sewn that bit to that bit. <laughs> Um, and then I'm just putting this triangle. So I ignore that dog ear for now. I'm going to cut it off in the next okay. thing I do. Yes. Next step. Next so stage. I'm just so I'm sewing this triangle to this square. So I just fold it over and I'm going to sew from this side. Does that mean you've got to spin it around? Yes, I'm just yeah. going to go like that. Okay. So you can see, you know, I'm going on about a quarter of an inch and a scant quarter of an inch. You can't really see there. What have I sewn with it? Oh, there you go. So that's with my, can you see that seam there? Yeah. So that's with my quarter of an inch foot mm -hmm. and that's my scant quarter of an inch. So it's put the fractional. Yeah. See, see how fractional it is, but it's this line, this line of stitching is just to mm. this side of that line of stitching. It's can by you see like a that? couple of threads, isn't it? It's, it, it literally is. is and that thread. makes all the difference. It's a thread, but it, but it does the more, as you, you know, it, your block grows, it makes more and more of a difference. So I think once you start quilting to this level, it is about being so precise. Yes, it is. And you know, other people may not even see it. I was I was saying about this with my dad the other day. He arrived just as I was finishing off painting one of the walls in the kitchen, and uh, he's oh, it looks really good. I was like, yeah, but you know, this bit where the masking tape wasn't there's a tiny tiny, and he's like. No one will see it. Mm. Only you will see it. Yeah. Um, but if you, it's if you, it's what you can live with, isn't it? Yes. If you can't live with that point not being absolutely perfect, do it Lucy's way. If you can, do it the other way. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't care, just go for it. If you're not bothered, pretty, yeah, you just want to sew bits of fabric together, which is fine. Absolutely fine. I'm of that camp. Well, no, just so you know, it's fine. and it just you know it's made with love. And sometimes it, it, sometimes it is for me. You know, sometimes it really doesn't matter if things are completely perfect or matching most of the time it does, I'm not gonna lie. But especially for a block <laughs> like this, where you've got so many intersecting points that it's nice to get it just right. So then um, I can take my ruler or, I mean, you can just use scissors, but you can see there, that's a scant. Can you see it's just... It's just shy of quarter of yes. an inch, isn't it? So then we're just gonna trim that off. You can just do it with scissors, but then you can test as well, you know, that you've yeah. um So when you come to there. now sew that with those, you've got to be mindful that that is so that's scant, a scant as well. Yeah, so I sew this whole section yeah. scant. Yeah. And then I sew the pieces together. Normal. Normal. <laughs> normal. Yeah. Normal, normal. It's all in the book. So this is the pattern that we're using. It's brand new today. We've got to step it up at some point. We stay in our comfort zone, don't we? Stay in our comfort zone and we make, you know, nice, easy blocks. And then at some point, we've got to take that, dip our toe into the wonderful world of intermediate. Yes. This is the wonderful world of intermediate, which is why Lucy is fab at giving us those hints and tips that actually mean that we get the best that we possibly can. And this will be the finished article. And I'm So with... actually, yeah. if, if you do, if you are someone that, is going to worry about loose sleep over a missed point. Yes. Do it loose's way. <laughs> That's me. That's I you. I can't sleep. The points oh. aren't matching. Um, I will just say this looks very simple. It looks like a very simple block. Yes. But until you start sewing it, you realise how important, you know, all of these precise Well, you've got are. a lot of this cut on the bias, so you've got, you there's wiggle room there for things yes. to go slightly awry. Yes. It is, um, it's a challenge in technique, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It this is. is. And so there are little things that will help you along the way, you know, things like trimming that, just making sure that that's going to be your scant quarter of an inch um, seam will help. 
when I sew these triangles together, I press this seam open because the bulk, as I'm sewing, can just knock this out of alignment. And what you really need is that line there matched up with that corner point. I feel if quite this nervous is... for you. Thanks. <laughs> if this is off, right, if this is off, I mean, even fractionally, it distorts the whole pattern. It's just not worth doing it. <laughs> you have to do it right. Go home. Yes. Uh, no, not really. <laughs> but, you know, it just, for me, personally, that's, you know, I, I like it to be perfect, so she says, all confidently. Um, so I just oh, do the, the I just do the peeling it back and making sure that point is lining up with the seam. Okay. <laughs> I do feel the pressure now. Well, you know, you yeah. And then <laughs> people that watch, self imposed know, self -imposed pressure. pressure. I just like to say I'd be impressed with anything. Um, people but... that watch will know I rarely pin. Well, I'm pin I'm pinning this. I, that's not going anywhere. Intermediate quilts. Pinning is happening. Yes. And then even along this edge, because like you say, you've got the bias um, and also because you've got points, it's hard to get that. It's it's hard for that not to move as you're sewing. <laughs> I'm so not intermediate yet. I'm so not there yet. That's OK. It's but that's OK. okay. It's at your own pace. Absolutely. And then I'm going to sew, and you can see how I've pinned. I'm going to sew so I can see that. Yeah. See that point. Do I don't want to sew from do, this though, side. Is yeah. maybe just create one of these blocks and have it as a cushion to start off with. <laughs> that's a great idea. And then I wouldn't necessarily have idea. the pressure of having the entire quilt to do. No. Uh, because I'm just not there yet. And, and I, you, no. know, you know me, I'll always be honest with you. And, and actually, at the Great British Sewing Me, some of you were so sweet and they said, you know, it gives us hope that you're still learning too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, I'm learning. And I mean, this isn't, you know, these kinds of blocks aren't for everybody. Even somebody that's been sewing for a really long time might just enjoy the simplicity of, you know, simple blocks. That's absolutely fine. That's okay. There's, you don't have to you know, move on and, and do blocks that might be slightly more frustrating, you know, that you've got to get, that you've got to get right. But it's, and and I say right, you know, it, it's all relative, isn't it? It's what, it's like you say, it's what people's levels of sort of perfection might be or yeah. what perfection means to you. And you know, it could be the thing. perfectly imperfect. Oh, yes, wonderful. I'll go with that one. Yeah, perfectly, perfectly imperfect. imperfect. That's absolutely fine. However... Look at that. So perfect. once that's pressed, that yeah. will be perfect. And you know, like I, I was saying the other day, wasn't was it Tuesday? Oh, I was yeah, saying about the way, way you press, you press it. So if I press that up, look how that goes fun. Look how that looks then. It looks it's like you missed it. Behind it, it looks wrong. But, but if, if you... I press it that way, perfect. Yay! <laughs> Anne in Cheshire says, "I think this is a video." I need to bookmark when I'm ready to move on, Lucy. And yeah, we don't want to scare anyone. Like, no, we, we don't absolutely be, don't. No, but... don't be scared. And it's a beautiful book because there are beginners things in there, but it says intermediate for a reason. That's it's like a warning. <laughs> you know, what? What? it's a warning that you, if you're, you know, if you don't want to mess around with scantful, yada yada, you might want to not do this one because it is a little bit more. Um, Producer Paul says you can't be a beginner forever. It's time to move on. Yeah. I, I would. Yeah. Okay, so my tip would be do a cushion first. If yes. this if this is if this is yeah. the first time you're dipping that toe into the intermediate world. Yes. And absolutely and have a go and have a, it. have a go at just doing the rectangles. Have a little play with trimming them down yeah. and getting that. Because once you've cracked that then that's the hardest bit over Perfect. with, really. So So just repeat that a few times. So just do that four times, which I'm, I'm not going to get done, but I'll do another one. <laughs> well, because it took us three quarters we'll now to do another do one. one. I know, but if I'm not talking while I'm sewing it, I might get <laughs> I might get a bit further. We will see. <laughs> oh, no, but it's the explanation, isn't it? It's and, absolutely yeah. the explanation. And then even as you're, you know, things like, you might want to think about which triangle goes over the top of the other triangle? You know, do you yeah. want all your seams a certain way? It, it, you know, there's lots of ways you can be fussy about this. I if would like you to say to geeky. Be. Quilt geeky. geeky. Yes, quilt geek. I'd and that's okay. About that. Would you yeah. be happy to be a quilt geek? Yeah, I mean, I, it's a funny thing because I think 
anything creative, a lot of it's dependent on mood, isn't it? And there might be times when I don't want to be really precise. I'm just not in the mood for precision. Yeah. I just want something nice and simple, maybe a bit of chain piecing, you know, or I might want to do a bit of improvisation, you know, or I might just want to do some hand sewing or, you know, different things. And that's, you know, one of the reasons I really love quilting is it gives me that opportunity mm. to um, engage with all those versions of my creative self and I can, I can fulfil whatever aspect of it what is that I've I want to do. What I've heard from a lot of quilters is that when they've done something like this, which you really have to concentrate and think about as you do, that actually what they'll then go and do is say something out of the, um, the book that we had in the first hour and maybe make a, uh, an Ollie the Octopus or something because they just want something quick yes. and easy and then you have that gratification that you've made something quick and easy. Absolutely. Having laboured over Absolutely. something so precise. And that's, and what, that's it. Yeah. That's why we often have multiple projects on the go because, like you say, at the end of a long day, you might not want to do this. Yes. But if you've got a day off, you're like, yes, yeah. it's raining, it's hideous outside, let's actually crack Sit on and, and really have that satisfaction of doing something yeah. absolutely spot And it's just on. a different... This is still can be incredibly meditative and incredibly rewarding. You just have to focus. So mm. sometimes doing that, you know, focusing is in itself It's like relaxing. the Sudoku of quilting. There you go. Yes, that's it. Is that's that exactly it? exactly it. It's like a challenge. And I love... I'm a learner. I love learning and I love challenging myself. I that's love what discovering keeps us young. new things. And so that's, you know, that's, that's genetics from my nan, that is. That's oh, is that it? Is. Thanks, yeah, 99-year-old. Still wow. learning. Yeah, really? Went, went to university in her 60s. Yeah. She's did a learner. She? Yeah. What did she, she study? Did. Politics. Amazing. Yeah, because she wanted to. You know, I think that's, like, you know, it's fantastic. What's her name? Joan. Oh, um, yeah. you, which your daughter's <laughs> named yeah. after? Who your daughter's named after? Yeah. Will she be watching? I hope so. Hi, Nan. <laughs> Hello, Joan. <laughs> Good on you, girl. Yeah. Yeah. She's fabulous. I'm going to give that a press with the iron because I, I want to press my <laughs> seams open. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I'm no cheating here. Finger <laughs> no. No, I mean, finger pressing no, isn't, no. isn't cheating, but it's not the same. It's, you know, it's not the same. Um, so, challenge, yes. But also in this book, there are beginners. Beginner yes. projects. Yeah. So maybe mix it up. Hey, who knows? But look at these in all the... I mean, these in your own favourite colourways... And that's the thing, isn't it? Everybody's idea of, of quilting beauty comes down to the colours, I think. Yeah, it's all, it, for me, it's all in the fabric. Mm. You know, I love, the, I love the patterns, but I can, I can easily quite see, you know, there, there are um, quilts in there that I wouldn't necessarily do in the same colours, but I can visualise how it would look in, you well, know, imagine... in, in a different colour. And you can always make one block of some, you know, you could do... Yeah. Like and you can do see. like a tester block with your fabric, you know, fabric that you love, just to see how that. So producer works Paul, out. who is now getting, you know, a bit creative yes. from his desk, yes. uh, says, <laughs> "How about that in the dashwood fabric we had? Yeah, beautiful. In your first hour, the confetti. It'll beautiful. give it a whole different look. Be amazing. Look at that one. Now this one." Maybe in some of the ones that we've got on the show today. So you've got those deep, rich colours. Yeah. And I think, you know, so that could be that could be quite a male quilt. But then if you did it in, like, your tildes or whatever, suddenly you've got such a different look. Yeah, I mean, if you, anything, if you do um, something patterned, like, ones like that, I think, look beautiful in, like, the, the bold, solid, yeah. um, you know, fabrics. Uh, anything with a pattern, you know, you are going to get different looks depending on the on the sort of theme of the fabric. I love that one. I keep coming back to that one. It's absolutely beautiful. Isn't it stunning? Absolutely beautiful. But, I mean, if you did that in red, white and blue... Oh, yeah. It would be different again, wouldn't it? Yeah. But, I mean, that's all with a dark background and brighter... Oh, so then you could do it like, yeah, know, like the night star. Brighter stars. Can I just show something very yeah. quickly? Yeah! And I have said this before, so I... I apologise if I've given this tip, you've already heard it, but it's worth repeating. So my line's nicely aligned with my um, corner point there, but you can see I've been overly cautious and I've got a bit of extra of this um, 
triangle fabric there. Mm. So I'm just going to go back over. I've just missed that point. So I'm just going to go back over and make a slightly larger seam. Okay. Fractionally. Because I'm we a are talking about threads <laughs> here, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's what it comes down to. That's how precise we're being. Um, Anne says, "There's no sewing police. Little slips add unique design features. Enjoy your journey and keep sewing." Says Anne. Anne in Staffordshire, yes, I absolutely. completely agree. Absolutely, and that um, if you can live with it, that's your you problem, isn't it? it? <laughs> yeah, if you can live with it. But then see the quilt that it. I made this morning. <laughs> Had that skip on the quilting, and, and you love it about that because my captain's like, you know, these because it reminds happen. you of Teddy. Reminds me of Teddy. And yeah. So that's a love, you know. So that's lovely. So they all tell a story, and they're all, you know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just think in a design where you, it's, you know, very graphic like this. Yeah. You, you're going to get a better result. And also, you know, we, we've we've. This is all about learning, isn't it? This absolutely. channel, inspiration and learning. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you so shouldn't, shouldn't be if you're a beginner, you shouldn't be afraid of doing this, because how do you get? You know, well, how exactly. do you progress? How do That's you challenge yourself? That's why I do yourself? a cushion or something first, yeah, so that you absolutely. can absolutely give it a go. Yeah, yeah. And if nothing else, uh, then you can always make it into a dog or a cat bed. Because now I've told you how to do it a bit easier. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's not too much. The ones, the ones that go horribly wrong. And I can't bother to unpick. I always get turned into dog or cat beds. Yeah, well, I'll yeah. be honest. Well, exactly. That's, that's what yeah. happens. That's, they know. don't care. You don't. Ha nothing goes to waste. And just because you don't like it doesn't mean somebody else. That the dog will would object. <laughs> yeah, dog would object. The day that Eric turns There's around and goes, no, 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 no. You can give the. You <laughs> and know. they're really grateful for them as well. Yes. Really grateful. Yeah, and that's really the grateful. that's the beauty of it. So have a yeah, have a little think. So I'm just going to go back and trim this. Um, rectangle again because I'm at a point where I need, <laughs> I need where one you need and haven't them. got one. Oh. So I'm just going to do that. Oh, we've got some more pictures. Oh, John, thank you for sending these in. Isn't this lovely? I love seeing the yeah, pictures. Yeah, me too. You are a clever bunch. Oh. Now oh. Sally's is on the right. Nice. Very nice. That's gorgeous. Pauline's Sally. is on. Pauline's. There's two of them there, aren't they? On the left. Fab. And Sarah's is in the middle. You are such a clever bunch. Thank you so much. I'm also looking at how they've been quilted. That's my next thing, is starting to look at actually yes. how I quilt stuff. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. They're gorgeous. And see that, you know, there's a lot of points in a lot of those yeah. as well. So, you know, lining those up and getting those um, all matching takes some doing. And seeing it in the different colourways as well. Just perfect. Yes. Thank you. That's really lovely. $23.95, that's how you're going to get this book. Um, Devon Lavigne. I think I'm saying that right. I don't know. <laughs> that's how we said it earlier, wasn't it? <laughs> Paul says he's loving your work. Do you get it? Oh, dear me. I know, I He's just getting worse, I isn't know. he? I know, I it's know. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think he's being egged on by award-winning director Mike. Are they encouraging each they other? They are egging each other on with their terrible puns. So <laughs> you can see, <laughs> you can see, you know, I'm playing about with this ruler because I want to get it accurate. I've cut the width, I've cut the width, so that's the two and a half. And I'm just, I mean, these rulers are so great. They've got so many markings on them that you really can. You know, it doesn't Bike matter which way you're quilters, doing it, Lisa, you'll see it. Thing. So I've got my quarter of an inch running that way and that line there, you know, that's a quarter of an inch. So that's where that point's cutting across. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you're after. If you're doing the technique that Lucy was talking about earlier, yes. that's what you're after. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, it is about that accuracy, isn't it? It is. Very much. Um, is it also a bit like, you know, when you were at school and you had to do science and you had to read things off the thermometer and stuff, actually being level with it? <laughs> yes. As well? Yeah. Oh, less than a minute with Lucy. What? Yeah. What? What? Oh, so, oh. So hey. You can see it's starting to come together. Yeah. So I'll sew this one first. Which bit do you like? Do you like the cutting out bit or do you like the putting together or do you like the final? And there it is. Ta -da. Me, um, Which bit's your favourite bit? I'm not, I, do you know, that also depends on my mood. Okay. It just depends what mood I'm in. So, I never really love cutting out. 
to be honest. And that's why I use the rulers so much. <laughs> because I just want to get that bit done with yeah. so yeah, I can yeah. get to sewing. You know, the prep isn't my favourite bit. I'm going to leave but... you to sew okay. because um, I've got to go over there. Oh, okay. we've got, because it's near the end of the show, basically. Oh, <gasps> yes. Gosh, it came Thank so you. quickly. I know. Thank we were busy, you. you know, being accurate all over the place. <laughs> um, right, I'm going to look at some fabric. Thank you ever so much. When are you back? Thank oh, you tomorrow. tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> I did know that. With a did. bit more advanced stuff again tomorrow. Oh, we're stepping up again. A little, little bit. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. Let's look at these fabric bundles. A whopping four metres. Four metres of fabric in each of these. A metre of each. This is the most popular one. Tends to be, though, when we show you it together so that's your uh, four meters there in your mr fabric 32 45 for four meters yeah you see i think this would be look beautiful for a baby quilt these colors look at those aren't they gorgeous so if you would like those kind of more of a pastel palette we'll go with lucy's top today 32 45 there pwgc 99 that's your mystery now, Mischief, this is Mischief, there it is, there's your Mischief, love these, yes. Oh, this is producer Paul's favourite, 3245, YI, GC11 for that one. Oh, check out your basket for this one. Oh, we're running low, running low. Four metres of fabric, 100% cotton, beautiful to work with, fabulous for your quilting. Uh, there we go. This is your last one. This is Misty. Misty. Yeah. Um, 32.45 again. Now, the wonderful world of sewing quarter doesn't stop there. No, 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 no. We will be back again tomorrow. And just a note, as Anne said, this is a show today to earmark for when you're ready for it. You can always watch our shows back on YouTube. There's a whole library of shows on YouTube. So my advice to you would be when you buy a project that you know that you're going to want to the designer's help on when you come to do it, write down the date and then when you go to YouTube, sewing quarter and the date and it will bring up the shows. You can fast forward to the demo bits and you can work your way through there. So that is my top, top tip for you when you see something like this. Now, Lucy is back tomorrow. Uh, Lucy, what are we doing? Oh, no, she's left the studio. She's run away. Put the kettle on, Luce. Um, what are we doing tomorrow? Let's have a look. Here we go. Easy like Sunday morning. And yet with an intermediate twist. Star Runner at 8 a.m. Oh, that's the, is that the Star Runner? Oh, you're going to love that. I've seen it. It's beautiful. 9 a.m. I so need that. Do you uh, see what you did there? Oh, Irene's back with us. You know that, that lady with the thread, thread, needle threader? She's back. Two brand new items. She only brings us great stuff. 10 o'clock is Butterfly's Block. And then at 11, it's all about those books and the lamp. It's getting to that time of year where we just need a lamp. Now, don't forget to text to win one entry per person, please. It is so to 66777. Should cost no more than your standard network rate. O ratings only, T's and C's apply, and you can be in with a chance of winning a fabulous Elna 240 EX sewing machine. Check out those baskets. Don't want anybody missing it. That seemed to be on repeat. Check out your baskets, check out your baskets, but it's just been one of those mornings. Um, have a lovely rest of the day, and I will see you bright and early with Lucy tomorrow morning. Bye bye. Follow us on Twitter for more inspiration, top tips, news, and share your own creations with us. <laughs>